Hello, my friends. Welcome to Open Math Camp. We begin our series of tutorials on arithmetic, and our first tutorial is about numbers. We will talk about natural and integer numbers, rational and irrational numbers. We will learn how to write rational form of the number having its decimal form, and we will know what is the real numbers and real line. Let's get started. Like us and subscribe to see new videos on Open Math Camp. Arithmetic is the science of numbers. Greek word arithmos means number, and arithmetic is about elementary properties and rules of calculations for numbers. For deep properties of numbers, we have a very important branch of mathematics called number theory. Let's begin with numbers. First of all, let's define what is the natural numbers. Natural numbers natural numbers is the set of in mathematics these curly braces stand for the set of set of so natural numbers is the set of numbers 0 1 2 3 and so on. It's very important to understand that sometimes natural numbers are defined as the numbers 1, 2, 3 and so on without 0, but I prefer to define natural numbers with 0. Natural numbers appeared when primitive man was counting his animals, cows, and other people, or even maybe wives. Maybe primitive man was counting his wives, telling I have no wife, I have one wife, two wives, three wives, and so on. Uh, next, let's talk about the concept of integer numbers, and let's define what is the integer numbers. Integer numbers, denoted as z, integer numbers, is the set of numbers, like natural numbers, it also has 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, but beside, it also has negative numbers, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and so on. From the definition, we can see that every number in the set of natural numbers is inside the set of integer numbers. So each element of natural numbers is inside integer numbers. That's why natural numbers is the subset of integer numbers. And in mathematics, we write that n natural numbers is the subset of integer numbers. And in mathematics, uh, this symbol stands for subset subset of natural numbers is the subset of integer numbers. Next, we define the concept of rational numbers. Rational numbers, denoted as Q, rational, rational numbers, is the set of numbers 
represent it as p over q, where p is an element of integer numbers. Once again, in mathematics, this symbol stands for element of. So p is element of integer numbers, or p is integer, and q is natural. Once again, the set of rational numbers is the set where each element can be represented as a fraction p over q, where p is integer and q is natural. From definition, it's obvious that any element of the set of integer numbers, for example, 3, for example, 3 is inside and 2 and minus 1, any element, is inside the set of rational numbers because we can write minus 3 as minus 3 over 1. So this is also rational numbers. And we can write that integer numbers is subset of rational numbers. Let's give uh, an examples of integer numbers. Examples are, for example, 1 over 2, minus 1 over 2, 3 over 4, minus 3 over 4, 9 over 44, and so on. Uh, we have very important result for <clears throat> rational numbers. Let's write it result that let's talk about what is the decimal representation for example 1 over 2 has a decimal representation of the number 0 0.5 if you calculate using calculator and divide uh, and 1 over 2 will be 0 0.5 minus 1 over 2 is minus 0 0.5. 3 over 4 is 0 0.75 and this is minus 0 0.75 and this number is 0 0.20 45 45 45 and so on and here 45 will be the period. Take the calculator and check it. Um, so this is the decimal representation and the first case is that the result is that any rational number can be represented as a decimal number of two cases. And the first case, case is that it has a finite number of digits in its decimal representation. For example, 1 over 2 is 0 0.5, so it has one digit of the floating point, uh, 3 over 4 is 0 0.75, so it has two digits of the floating point, and so on. And uh, in the first case, any decimal representation of the rational number has a um, finite number of digits in its decimal representation. The second case is that it can also have infinite number of digits in its decimal representation, like 9 over 44, which is 0 0.2045, 45, 45, and so on. And 45 is a period, so it has a infinite number of digits in its decimal representation, but it has a period. So these two cases are and only cases for rational numbers. Or we have finite number of digits in its decimal representation, or it's infinite, but we have a period. It's clear. Okay, let's...
let's assume a example 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 let's learn how to write rational representation of the number when we know it's decimal representation for example we have a number x which is equal to 0 0.123456 Four, five, six, four, five, six, and so on. And assume four, five, six is a period in its decimal representation. Let's write its rational representation of this number. For this, we multiply the both sides of this equation to 1000, and we will have 1000x equal to. One two three point four five six four five six four five six and so on. And when we multiply it to one thousand, our floating point moved from this place to this place. And next we perform a subtraction and write one thousand x minus x is equal to. One, two, three, four, five, six, four, five, six, four, five, six, and so on, minus zero point one, two, three, four, five, six, four, five, six, and so on. And we, if we subtract the first number, the second number from the first, we see that infinite tails of these two numbers offset each other and we will have no tail as a result so uh, here we have 6 minus 3 is 3 5 minus 2 is 3 4 minus 1 is 3 here is 3 1 2 so as a result we have 1000x minus x, which is 999x, is equal to 123.333. Next, we also multiply this number to 1000 because we want uh, to move our floating point to this place and have integer number. And after multiplication to 1000, we have here 1, 2, 3, 3, 3, 3, and here 999,000 x. And here we easily calculate x, and x will be 123,333 over 999,000. And this is a rational representation of the number where its decimal representation was this. And that's all. Along the same line, we can calculate rational representation of any number with infinite digits and with the period. This is the first, uh, this is the second case. And the first case is obvious. For example, if we have a number x, say 0 0.123, in this case, it's easy to see that x is 123 divided to 10, 100, 1000, divided to 1000. And this is a a rational representation of the number where its decimal representation was this. Easy. Uh, next, uh, let's talk about... We already know what is the rational number and how to calculate rational form. Next, talk about irrational numbers. 
irrational numbers, let's denote it like i, is the set of numbers x, where x doesn't have a representation p over q, where p is integer and q is natural. Once again, the set of irrational numbers is the numbers which are not rational and doesn't have a representation p over q, where p is integer and q is natural. Uh, examples of irrational numbers are the first is first example is number pi, which is three point one four one five nine two six five three five nine and so on. The next famous number is number e. Uh, all of this number will be covered further. Don't worry if you don't know these constants. Uh, number E is 2.71, The next famous example is square root of 2, which is 1.41, 42, 1, 3, 5, 6, and so on. And what is the common thing in these three numbers? The common thing is that the number of digits in its decimal representation is infinite. And it doesn't have a period. Let's write it. First, infinite digits and second, no period. No period. And it it's obvious that these numbers are not of that two kinds of rep decimal representation for rational numbers. That is why these numbers are not rational. They are irrational. Uh, next, uh, let's define what is the real numbers R. Real numbers denoted as R, real numbers. At this stage of the notion of the number, when we don't know what the complex number is, we can define real numbers as a union of rational numbers and irrational numbers. And in mathematics, this symbol stands for union. So real numbers is rational and irrational numbers. We can draw a picture for better understanding. Assume this is the set of real numbers and it consists of rational and irrational numbers. And we already know that set of integer numbers is the sub subset of rational numbers, and the set of natural numbers is the subset of integer numbers. In the future, we also learn what is the set of transcendentic numbers. And this set is the subset of irrational numbers. We will talk about transcendentic numbers in our session of number theory. So this is a very good picture for understanding what is the real number is. Um, in mathematics, we also have a, uh, the concept of real line. Let's draw a line 
R. This line is called real line. When we assume that this is a representation of real numbers as a real line, um, what we mean by this? We mean that any real number we assume is on this line. For example, natural numbers on this line 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Negative numbers on this line. So, integer numbers are on this line. We also assume that rational numbers on this line, so say 1 over 2, which is 0 0.5, is here. 3 over 4, which is 0 0.75, is also here. Along the same line, assume any rational number is on this line. Also assume irrational numbers on this line. For example, number pi is somewhere here. Pi, 3, 1, 4, and so on. Assume number e is also here, 2.71 and so on. And assume square root of 2, square root of 2 is also here, 1.41 and so on, and etc. So any real number is has a place in this line. So this is the definition and description of the real line. It was everything I wanted to talk about for this lesson. Thank you very much and have a great day. Bye. Hello, my friends. Welcome to Open Math Camp. We continue our series of tutorials on arithmetic. And today we are going to talk about basic arithmetic operations. Arithmetic operations. such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Also, we will learn arithmetic operations as rising a number to a power and finding the root of the number. Let's get started. Like us and subscribe to see new videos on Open Math Camp. Um, arithmetic operations, uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division are main operations in arithmetic and um, these operations let's denote our operation as a star so this operation can be any of these four arithmetic operation in this case assume we have two numbers a and b, where a and b is are an element of real line, or a and b are real numbers. Once again, this symbol in mathematics stands for element of. So assume a and b are real numbers, and when we perform arithmetic operation with these two numbers, in this case, the result will be also some number C, also real number. 
and the uh, only exception is division by zero because in mathematics if we divide the number by zero this operation is meaningless uh, assume we have a number a which is not zero and a is an element of it this is real any number which is not zero and we write a over zero and this operation is meaningless because if we assume this is equal to b then we have if we multiply the both sides of this to zero we have a equal to b multiplied to zero but we have left part not equal to zero but the right part is zero because b is multiplied to zero and the result will be zero uh, so that's why this is the meaningless and division by zero is also meaningless operation let's talk about first talk about addition and subtraction these two operations addition and subtraction are opposite operation and we will talk about this later let's first about let's first talk about definition actually addition and subtraction have no definition and we can describe addition as the process of combining two, num two numbers say 9 plus 2 equal to 11 and these two elements 9 and 2 two numbers called addends and 11 is called sum another example is 7.5 plus 3 equal to equals to 10, 10 and 10.5 and this operation can be described using the real line assume we have a real line we discussed real line in a previous session assume we have a point 7 and 5 then if we add number 3 to this point then we have to move to the right side of the real line by the amount of 3 and result will be 10.5 so um, plus is moving to the right side of the of the real line uh, when we perform subtraction and we write 7 and 5 minus 3 in this case uh, this is this can be described as moving to the left side of the real line minus 3 and it will be obviously 4 and 5 4.5 so this is a description of this operation and we cannot define this operation uh, it's very hard to define this uh, next example assume uh, we have 2 minus 5 in this case if we have a 2 and here we have a 0 then minus 5 it can be described as moving to the left side by the amount of 5 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 5 
and this will be minus 3. So this is obvious operation and as we already said the result of this operation is also real number. Um, it's imp important to understand that addition, addition and subtraction are these two operations are um, opposite operations. What we mean by this? Assume we have two, then if we write plus three, we will have five. And uh, opposite operation to the plus is minus, and we can go back uh, writing minus three. So two plus three is five, and five minus three is again initial point which is 2. So plus and minus are opposite operation and further we will talk about multiplication and division and they are also opposite opposite operation operations to each other. Let's further describe multiplication and division. These two operations. Multiplication. First, let's talk about the multiplication. Multiplication is, I will give a definition which is quite easy to understand and to remember. This is like several several addition several additions uh, and multiplication is like if we add the number to itself several times for example if we write if we write 2 times 3 this means 2 3 times 2 plus 2, plus 2. We have to add 2 to itself and this is done 3 times. So 2 plus 2 plus 2, 3 twos. We have 2, 2, 2, 3 times and this will be 6. This will be 6. Along the same line, uh, if we write 5 times 2, then this is 5 plus 5. And this is done 2 times, which is equal to 10. Along the same line, 4 times 5 is equal to 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 and plus 4 and this is done 5 times which is equal to 20 in this case 4 is called Multiplicand, multiplicand, five is called multiplier, and twenty is called product, and product. As I said, is also an element of the real numbers, the set of real numbers. And next, uh, let's talk about division. Operation division. 
division can be described as a process process of determining determining how many times how many times one number is contained in another number so it seems like it's quite a complicated definition but this is just about how many times one number is contained in another number for example uh, 8 divided by 2 because we can write 8 is equal to 2 plus 2 plus 2 and plus 2 4 times that's why 2 is contained in 8 4 times so result is 4 and uh, in this case 8 is called dividend Two is called divisor. And four is called quotient. Another example is twenty four divided by six and because 24 can be written as six plus six plus six plus six here it will be 12 this will be 18 and this will be 24 uh, that's why six is contained in 24 four times and the result is four next let's have an example of division 28 divided by 7 which is equal to 4 and in this case the quotient 4 is the whole number and sometimes um, quotient is not whole number uh, assume an example um, 19 divided by 5 because if uh, we have 5 one time it will be 5 5 two times will be 10 3 times will be 15 and 4 times is already 20 where 19 is somewhere here that's why uh, 5 is contained in 19 3 times and we write 3, five, three times 5 which is 15 And plus 4. And 4 is called the remainder. Um, but if quotient is the whole number, and as in this example, and 7 um, divide 28, and the result is whole number, in this case, uh, we have, we can say that 28 is multiple of 7 and 7 is a divisor of 28 because 4 
because 4 here is a whole number. That's why, once again, 28 is multiple of 7, and 7 is a divisor of 28. Uh, next, let's talk about operation of rising a number to a power. For example, if we have uh, some number a and rising to a power, some number n, uh, here um, n is called exponent and a is called base. And assume we have result b and in this case b is called power. Um, how this operation rising a number to a power is defined? We can for easy explanation define it as several multiplication. For example, 2 on a power of 3 is multiplication several times and exactly three times three times so once again rising a number to a power uh, assume the power is the whole number in this case this is uh, about multiplication of 2 to itself and it's done three times and the result will be 8. Another example is 3 and the power of 4 is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 and it's done 4 times and the result will be 81. If we talk about uh, if n is equals is equal to two, then uh, two is called square, so a squared. And if uh, n is equal to three, this is cube. This is called cube and a cubed. And once again, uh, everyone everyone must remember that a on a power of one is again again a and a on the power of zero is one and we will talk about maybe later when we better understand mathematics because at this stage this is only a definition of the operations mathematical of arithmetic operations let's uh, further talk about root of the number Say we have a root of the number a, uh, and root also has a power, say n. And how to calculate, uh, for example, square root of 4, we also write it without this number 2, just square root of 4. Um, third root of 27 third root of 8, fifth root of 32, how to calculate all of these examples. Um, let's move to the definition. I will define it informally just for better understanding. Um, for example, third root of 8 is 2. Why? Because if we multiply 2 to itself and we take for this multiplication 2 3 times, 3 times, because the power is 3. So 2 multiplied to itself and we take 2 3 times, uh, the num answer is 2 because exactly 2 is multiplied to itself. Once again, for example, 
fifth root of 32 is also 2 because we have to multiply 2 to itself. And we have to take 2 5 times. Why 5 times? Because the power of the root is 5. And what number we took and multiplied to itself? We took it 5 times to receive 32. What number? This number is 2. Along the same line, any square root can be calculated. For example, third root of 8 is 2. We already know it. And sorry, third root of 27 is 3 because we have to multiply 3 to itself and take t3 exactly 3 times to receive 27. Uh, it's important to understand that um, root of the number is an opposite operation to rising to the power. For example, if we have 2 and by rising to the power 3 we have, we have 8, then opposite operation is third root of 8 will bring your 8 to the initial point 2. This was um, an understanding of the root of the number. Further, we will solve more complicated problems to better understand this topic. It was just a definition and understanding of bas basic arithmetic operation. It was everything I wanted to talk about for today. Thank you very much and have a great day. Bye. Hello, my friends. Welcome to Open Math Camp. In this tutorial, we will learn order of arithmetical operations. Let's get started. Um, as we can see from these two examples, order of arithmetical operation operations are very important because uh, in first example, we perform 5 minus, minus 3, and in second example, first we perform 3 plus 2. That's why the result of the first example is 4, whereas the result of the second example is 0. Um, that's why an order of operations, in this case defined by brackets, um, is important. Let's write it brackets brackets define um, an order of operations. It brackets define an order or sequence of operations, um, but in arithmetics, how we define order of performing operations. L let's write it again. Order of operations. Order of arithmetic operations. Um, the first, first, um, we perform operations in brackets. And second, uh, we perform multiplication and division before plus and minus.
uh, once again, uh, when we perform, when we have some example to calculate, uh, the first operations in brackets are performed and then multiplication and division um, are performed before plus and minus. Let's solve, uh, let's give some examples. Example one. Assume we have three times four minus two times three. In this case, since multiplication and division um, are done before plus and minus, first we have to solve these two uh, parts of our example and we will have 12 minus 6 which is 6. The second example um, 10 plus 3 times 5 minus 4 10 minus 2 times 3 plus 1 plus 5. In this case, first we perform operations inside the, the brackets. And it will be, in this case, uh, inside these brackets, first we perform multiplication it will be 6. That's why let's rewrite it. 10 plus 3 times 5 minus 4. And first, inside the first brackets, we will have 10 minus 6 plus 1. And uh, the second brackets will be 5 times 3. Um, these brackets, inside these brackets, we have 10 minus 6, which is 4, plus 1, 5. All in all, we have 10 plus 3 times 5, minus 4 times 5, plus 5 times 3. And it will be 10 plus 15 minus 20 plus 15. So we have um, as a result 10 plus 15, 25, 25 minus 20 is 5, and 5 plus 15 is 20. Let's solve another example. Example 3. Uh, in this case, uh, our example looks like 4 plus 3 times the first brackets, 15 minus 2 times 5 minus 4. So we have brackets inside brackets. So first we look at these brackets, but inside these brackets, first of all, we have to solve what is inside the second brackets. So first we solve here, and five minus four will be one. So this will be uh, one, and we, if we rewrite it, it will be 3 times 15 minus 2 times 1. So it is inside the brackets we have 15 minus 2, which is 13, and it will be 4 plus 39, which is equal to 43. So it was. Um, 
examples I wanted to give you to understand uh, priority of arithmetical operations. It was everything for this time. Thank you very much. Bye. Like us and subscribe to see new videos on Open Math Camp. In this tutorial, we are going to learn how decimal positional numeral system works. And at the end of this tutorial, you will understand this formula for the representation of the number in decimal numeral system. Let's begin. Um, in the modern days, when we write any number, say 2022, a better example is 1984, for example, different numbers. Uh, we use so-called decimal positional numeral system. And uh, it's called decimal because this is it's using the base of 10. So number 10 is the base of this numeral system. The way of denoting numbers in the decimal system is called decimal notation. So this number can be called the decimal notation. Let us take number 10 and write its um, powers, 10 to the power 0, 10 to the power 1, 10 to the power 2, 10 to the power 3, and so on. 10 to the power 0 will be 1, 10 to the power 1 is 10, 10 to the power 2 is 100, and 10 to the power 3 is 1000, and so on. Um, we will represent our number as a linear combination of these numbers, the powers of 10. Uh, let's write our number in this system. 1984 is equal to 1 times 1000 plus 9 times 100 plus 8 times 10 plus 4 times 1 and uh, here 1 is 10 to the power 0 10 is 10 to the power 1 100 is 10 to the power 2 and 1000 is 10 to the power 3. Um, that's why uh, any digit of our number, for example, 8, 8, um, Eight is multiplied to the ten to the power one. Nine is multiplied to the ten to the power two. One is multiplied to the ten to the power three, and four is multiplied to the ten to the power zero. So we can write here um, zero, one, two, three. And each number, for example, 9, is multiplied to the corresponding power of 10. In this case, 2. Um, let's solve another problem, and it will be much more clear. For example, take the number 
85,437. And uh, if we write under these digits uh, the powers of 10, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, we can write our number as 8 times 10 to the power 4 plus 3 times 10 to the power 3 plus 2 times sorry 4 times 10 to the power 2 plus 3 times 10 to the power 1 and plus 7 times 10 to the power 0. And this is a representation of our number uh, as a linear combination of the powers of 10. And this our system is called positional system because position of the number is very important here. It defines um, it defines its place in this representation. For example, uh, number four here is the coefficient which is multiplied to the 10 to the power 2. This is our 4 multiplied to the 10 to the power 2. That's why um, any our number is called decimal notation because of this representation. Uh, let's solve another example. 78,021. In this case, this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is 7 times 10 to the power 4 plus 8 times 10 to the power 3 plus 0 times 10 to the power 2 plus 2 times 10 to the power 1 and plus 1 times 10 to the power 0. And that's all. It's quite easy, actually. Um, it was the classic representation of the positive integer number. As we see uh, this number here, this is positive number, and it's integer number. Using this decimal representation, we can also represent non-integer number, say the number 128 and floating point 25. How it's done? Uh, for this purpose, uh, let us write um, the powers of 10, negative powers of 10. 10 to the power 0, 10 to the power minus 1, 10 to the power minus 2, 10 to the power minus 3, and so on. Um, 10 to the power 0 will be 1. Ten to the power minus one will be zero point one. Ten to the power minus two will be zero point zero one, and this will be equal to zero point zero zero one. And here we can write previous powers of ten. Ten to the power one. 2, 
three, and so on. This is 10, 100, 1000, and so on. So uh, now we can use negative uh, powers of the 10 to use in our representation. And our number in this wide system of powers uh, will be written as 128 14.25 is equal to uh, here we'll, we'll write this as in previous case this will be 0 1 2 and this will be minus 1 and minus 2 um, and this will be 1 times 10 to the power 2 plus 2 times 10 to the power 1 plus 8 times 10 to the power 0 plus 2 times 10 to the power minus 1 plus 2 to the plus sorry 5 plus 5 to the power 10 to the power minus 2 and that's all because um, is it obvious we can also write it our number as 1 times 100 plus 2 times 10 plus 8 times 1 plus 2 times 0 0.1 plus 5 times 0 0.01 and it is obvious and that's why this 100 is 10 squared this 10 is 10 to the power 1 this one is sorry this one is 10 to the power 0 uh, 0 0.1 is equal to 10 to the power minus 1 and 0 0.01 is 10 to the power minus 2 so this is equivalent re representation um, so we can now formula formulate a general result Um, any number, let's formulate general re result, any number, any number A, B, C, D, point E, F, G. I'm using a quite easy form with four um, numbers before floating point and three and three numbers after floating point any number a b c d point e f g where these um, letters a b c d represent the digits of decimal notation any number a b c d point e f g can be can be written as a b c d point e f g equal to a times here yeah, to be more understandable we write the powers of 10 once again, 0, 1, 2, 3, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. 
and it will be a times 10 to the power 3 plus b times 10 to the power 2 plus c times 10 to the power 1 plus d to the 10 multiplied to 10 to the power uh, 0 and e multiplied to the 10 to the power minus 1 plus f times 10 to the power minus 2 and plus g multiply to 10 to the power minus 3. So this is a general representation of the number uh, with, with floating point in its uh, notation. Let's solve an example. Assume we have example Assume we have number 10,286 floating point 5, 2, 3 We immediately write the powers of 10 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. And now it's quite easy to write representation. It will be 1 times 10 to the power 4 plus 0 times 10 to the power 3 plus 2 times 10 to the power 2 plus 8 times 10 to the power 1 plus 6 times 10 to the power 0 plus 5 times 10 to the power minus 1 plus 2 times 10 to the power minus 2 plus 3 times 10 to the power minus 3. So now we can write um, representation of any decimal number with floating point as a linear combination of the coefficients of this notation. This is coefficients, our notation. Um, it's a linear combination of these coefficients with the powers of 10. It was everything I wanted to talk about for today. Thank you for your attention. Bye. Like us and subscribe to see new videos on Open Math Camp. In this tutorial, we will learn the visibility criteria for numbers 2, 3, 4, 5. 6, 7, and 9. At the end of this tutorial, you will quickly uh, know is big number divisible by any of these numbers. Let's get started. We will often uh, use very obvious fact that if number is represented as a sum of several numbers, say 18 is equal to 6 plus 3 plus 9 and each element of the sum each element of the sum is divisible by some number say 3 uh, I mean that number 3 um, divide any of the element of the sum 6, 3 and 9. In this case, 
uh, the resulting sum of these three numbers, 18, is also divisible by 3. Another example, 4 plus 16 plus 12. All of these numbers are divisible by 4. That's why the resulting sum, 32, is also divisible by 4. Let's begin from the simplest case. Um, divisibility criteria, divisibility criteria, DC, for number 2. And this criteria is um, if last digit digit is even or zero. It's quite obvious actually, um, but uh, we will, for the sake of um, for the sake of the beauty, um, prove this result. Assume we have a number 128. Obviously, this number is divisible by 2. Uh, but, and we write um, decimal representation for this number. We already know what is decimal representation from previous tutorials. Uh, this is 1 times 100. And 100, as we know, is 10 squared plus 2 times 10, 10 is um, equal to 10 to the power 1, this is 10 to the power 2, plus 8 times 1, which is 10 to the power 0. Um, of course, it's obvious that um, this 100, 1 times 100 is divisible by 2 because 100 is divisible by 2. 10 is divisible by 2. That's why um, the second element of the sum is divisible by 2. Here we have 8 divisible by 2. And if we had, for example, 7 instead 8, our number um, wouldn't be divisible by 2. That's why we only look at the last digit, and if the last digit is even or zero, if the last digit is zero, then uh, this last member will disappear, and every element of our representation is divisible by two, and resulting number is also divisible by two. That's all. Um, the general the more general proof is assume we have number a b c d where a b c and d are digits and let's write the corresponding power of 10 which we learned in the previous lesson 0 1 2 3 in this case, we have the rep decimal representation for this number, a times 10 to the power 3, plus b times 10 to the power 2, plus c times 10 to the power 1, or simply 10, plus d times 1, or instead 1 we write 10 to the power 0. Um, this is equal to 1. And obviously, every um, member, every element of this sum is divisible. I put this V um, saying that this is divisible. This is also divisible by 2. This is also divisible by 2. And everything 
depends on this d. If d is uh, even or zero, then our number is divisible by two. And that's all. It was the proof of our result. Let's finish. Let's put a non-empty triangle here. Next, um, let's talk about divisibility criteria for number three. Divisibility criteria for number three. And um, result is if the sum of digits of digits is divisible by 3. So if the sum of digits of the number is divisible by 3, then the number is also divisible by 3. Um, let's prove this result in a general way, like we did before. Let's begin the proof. Assume we have a number A, B, C, D. And once again, let's write the corresponding powers of 10 for decimal representation. This will be a times 10 to the power of 3 plus b times 10 to the power 2 plus c times 10 uh, plus d times 1. And this is, um, let's write it not as um, powers of 10. Let's rewrite it as numbers. This is a times 1000 plus b times 100 plus c times 10 plus d times 1. And here, because we are talking about divisibility for number 3, uh, we can write 1000 as 999 plus 1 and obviously 1 999 is divisible by 3 and also this is divisible by 9 actually and this result will also works uh, the same equivalent result also works if we put here also 9 9 so for 3 is if sum of digits is divisible by 3 and for 9 and for 9 is if sum of digits if div is divisible by 9 the same result so uh, we can assume that we can write that 1000 is equal to 999 plus 1 and obviously 999 is divisible by 3 and 9 here 100 is can be written as 99 plus 1 and again 99 is divisible by 3 and 9. 10 can be written as 9 plus 1 and 9 is divisible by 3 and 1. And if we rewrite it, it will be A times 999 plus 1 plus B uh, times 99 plus 1 plus C plus C times 9 plus 1 plus D times 1. And if we rewrite our um, last result, we will have A times 999 
and this one will move to the end and it will be just a plus a here we will have b times 99 and this one multiplied to the b will move to the end it will be plus b and here plus c times 9 and this one multiplied to the c will move to the end again it will be plus c and plus d will remain in its place so what we have here we have that all of these elements of this sum this element is divisible by 3 and 9 this element is also divisible by 3 and 9 this element also is also divisible by 3 and 9 because 999 99 and 9 uh, all of these numbers are divisible by 3 and 9 and everything depends on the last elements the sum of is this is the sum of the digits this is the sum of the digits sum of digits of our number and if the sum of digits of our number is divisible by 3 or 9 the whole number will be also divisible by 3 or 9 So we proved our result. Um, that's all. Our result is proved. So once again, if we have a number and uh, some of the elements of this number, some of the digits of this number is divisible by three, the number is divisible by three. And if the sum of the L digits of the number is divisible by 9, the number is divisible by 9. Let's um, give some, some examples. Examples. First example. Is number 129 divisible by 3 divisible by 3 um, because 1 plus 2 plus 9 is equal to 12 and 12 is divisible by 3 the answer is yes yes it is it is divisible by 3 in mathematics uh, this symbol uh, stands for follows so it follows that we have a positive answer so 129 is divisible by 3 because some of the elements 1 plus 2 plus 9 is equal to 12 and 12 is divisible by 3 next example uh, is number 1829 divisible by 9 because 1 plus 8 plus 2 plus 9 is equal to 20 and 20 is not divisible by 9 the answer is no so our number 1829 1, is not divisible by 9. Another example is number um, 17,874 divisible by 9. 
because 1 plus 7 plus 8 plus 7 plus 4 is equal to 27 and 27 is divisible by 9 the answer is yes our big number is divisible by 9 so now we can quickly define is our big number is divisible by 3 or 9 just assuming the sum of the digits of its number like us and subscribe to see new videos on Open Math Camp. Um, let's continue. Um, the visibility criteria for number four. And this criteria is um, last two digits digits are zeros or form a number a number divisible by 4. So we look, we, for example, we have a number, we have to look just at the last two digits, last two digits of our number. And if these last two digits are zeros, or the last two digits, for example, 2 and 9, uh, form a, a number, 29, for example, if this number is 4 and 8, it forms a number 48. And if this formed number is divisible by 4, our initial number will be divisible by 4. Let's begin uh, with examples and then we will prove the result. Examples. Um, first example is 8,264. Um, is this number divisible by 4? Um, the answer is yes, because 64 is divisible. Is divisible by 4. And that's why... Um, let me write just yes. So, our big number, 8264, is divisible by 4, because 64 is divisible by 4. Another example is number 1352 is divisible by 4. Yes, because number 52 is divisible by 4 and if we divide 52 by 4 it will be 13 that's why the answer is also yes another example um, because look at result we have last two digits are zeros or form a number divisible by four. Let's assume an example where last two digits are zeros. So 27,000, oh no, 272,800 is divisible by four because Sorry. is divisible by 4 because um, it has two zeros as last digits. That's why an answer is yes. And the last example 
fourth example is number big number two seven two eight one four two hundred seventy two thousand eight hundred fourteen is not divisible by four because fourteen is not divisible by four. So an answer is no. Next, let's prove this result. Begin our empty triangle. Uh, assume we have a number A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. Of course, it can be a bigger number. It can be A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on. But assume for simplicity, we have four digits number. And let's write um, powers of 10 for easily writing uh, decimal representation for this number. 0, 1, 2, 3. If you don't know decimal representation, look at uh, our previous uh, tutorial. I'm trying to give uh, information in a such way that um, everything which is used now uh, is explained before. I'm trying to do it. Let's see how it will be. So let's write decimal representation. It will be A times 1000 plus B times 100 plus C times 10 plus D times 1. And um, we have a divisibility by 4. Of course, this element of our sum is divisible by 4. So we put yes. This V means yes. This also divisible by 4. Let's just put v this also divisible by 4 and um, look at this c times 10 plus d times 1 obviously this is the definition of the number cd where c and d are digits and it has decimal representation of c times 10 plus d times 1. Um, let's rewrite it for better explanation. c d is equal to c times 10 to the power 1 plus d to the power 0 or c times 10 plus d times 1. And we have here here this number so if um, the number formed by last two digits is divisible by four or in other words if this number is divisible by four our pre initial number is divisible by four and it is the proof of our result so we just take last two digits and look at number um, which is um, generated, which is formed by these two digits. And if this number is divisible by four or C and D are equal to zeros, of course, they this part will disappear and our number will be divisible by four because uh, this is divisible by 4 and this also divisible by 4. So it's obvious. Um, let's go further. Um, divisibility criteria for number 5. And it's if last 
digit is five or zero. It's actually quite obvious, but anyway, um, we will try to prove uh, our result to be uh, rigorous. Uh, examples. Examples. 6,820 is divisible by 5 because last digit is 0. It must be 0 or 5. Um, 7,115 is divisible by 0. Is divisible by 5, sorry. Um, we cannot divide by 0. Um, never do it. Um, last digit is 5, that's why this number is divisible by 5. Third example, 8,146 um, is not divisible by 5 because last digit is 6 and 6 is not equal to 5 and 0 and that's why our number is not divisible by 5. Let's prove this result. Let's prove this result and uh, assume we have a number A, B, C, D. Let's write its powers of 10 for better writing our decimal representation. It's A times 1000 plus B times 100 plus C times 10 plus D times 1. And uh, any what this um, element of our sum is divisible by 5 because 1000 is divisible by 5 100 is divisible by 5 that's why this element b times 100 is also divisible by 5 c times 10 is also divisible by 5 and everything depends on this d is d equal to to 5 or d equal to 0. If d is equal to 5, then every element of our sum is divisible by 5 and our resulting number, initial number, is divisible by 5. If d is 0, then this element will disappear. This element, last element, will disappear. And uh, which in, in this case, uh, also obviously, an element is divisible by 5, and everything is divisible by 5, and our initial number. So, um, this result actually is also obvious, so it's quite easy to understand. Like us and subscribe to see new videos on Open Math Camp. Uh, further, let's talk about divisibility criteria for number 6. And uh, the result is if now our number, if divisible, divisible by three and and divisible by two. So if our number is divisible by three and divisible by two, then our number is divisible by six. Let's prove it first. It's quite obvious result. Um, if our number is divisible by 
2 and 3, then it has um, a representation and our number n is equal to a times 2 times 3. Um, this result is obvious, but if you don't understand it, further we will talk about um, prime number factorization and um, you will understand this. Any number is can be written as the multiplication of prime numbers. We will talk about prime numbers further. And in this case, if our number n is divisible by 3 and 2, we have to have such a representation. And if we rewrite our representation, this will be a times 6. And this kind of number, of course, is divisible by 6. Because it has a factor 6 and is divisible by 6. If we divide our number, we will have uh, just a without 6. Um, examples. Examples. First example is number 1224 is divisible by 6. First, we check, um, let's write A. Oh. Um, first, A, no, A is bad. For, the, for this case, um, it's divisible by 2, obviously, because number 4 is even. That's why this number is divisible by 2. Next, since 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 4 is equal to 9, and 9 is divisible by 3, and using previous result, our number is divisible by 3. That's why, since it's divis this number is divisible by 2 and 3, the answer is yes. So our number is divisible by 6. Second example, um, 3000. 272 is divisible by 2. So we write divisible by 2. And is this divisible by 3? Let's check the sum of digits of this number. 3 plus 2 plus 7 plus 2 is equal to 14. And 14 is not divisible by 3. That's why our number is not divisible by 3. That's why the answer is no. So our number is not divisible by 6. Because it's not divisible by 3. And we ha have to have have to have the both um, divisibility by 2 and divisibility by 3. We don't have divisibility by 3. That's why our number is not divisible by 6. Further, let's talk about um, divisibility criteria for number 7. For number 7. It's a formulated quite, um, it has very hard formulation, and that's why I will begin with examples um, for easy understanding. Examples. First example, 364. Um, I will Right, just is divisible by 7. 
because because um, here we take digits um, first digits 36 minus last di um, digits which are not the last digits and these digits uh, form a number 36 we write 36 minus 2 times last digit which is equal to 28 and we check is 28 is divisible by 7 in this case yes that's why the answer is yes and our initial number 364 is divisible by 7 because 36 number which is formed by um, digits that are not the last digit minus uh, last digit times 2 is equal to 27. Let's give another example for better understanding. Um, 294. Once again, we write 29 minus 2 times um, last digit and this is 21. 21 is divisible by 7 that's why an answer is yes. Our initial number 294 is divisible by 7. Uh, and last example is 163. We just take 16 minus 2 times 3 and it will be 10. 10 is not divisible by 7. That's why answer is no and 163 is not divisible by 7. Um, the proof of this result is quite technical but anyway I would like to give it. Assume we have number uh, to be more simple we assume just three numbers a b c um, and decimal representation of this number is a times 100 plus b times 10 plus c times 1 uh, let's write five times a b c will be equal to 5 multiplied uh, to a times 100 plus b times 10 plus c times 1. <clears throat> and um, this is equal to 5 times a times 100 plus b times 10 and let's write our c to separately it will be plus 5 times c i'm using mathematical operations uh, with braces i didn't um, explain you i will explain it later but anyway i'm using it And it will be let's write our last uh, row as fifty times a times ten plus b plus b. We moved um we took out of our braces number 10 um, and plus 5c. Now we write our 15 times braces as 49 as 49 times our braces uh, plus 
1 times our braces. And 5c we write as 7c minus 2c. Each element of this sum, if each element of this sum is divisible by 7, then our number is divisible by 7. Uh, obviously, this is divisible by 7. This is divisible by 7 because 7c is divisible by 7. And 49 times something is divisible by 7 because 49 is divisible by 7. And uh, everything depends on this. On this. Let's rewrite our... Um, red denoted numbers, a times 10 plus b minus 2c. But our initial number was a, b, c. And this is decimal representation of number a, b. a, b has a decimal representation a times 10 plus b times 1. And this is minus 2c is minus 2 times last digit, as we did earlier. So, once again, if number formed by digits which are not last digit, the first, second, third uh, digit, but not last digit. In, in our example, this is AB. So if we have number 123, we look at number 12, the number which is formed by first digits, and minus 2 times C. If uh, this number is divisible by 7, our initial number is divisible by 7. Um, it was the proof, and... Let's further uh, look at divisibility criteria for 8. We also know divisibility criteria for 9. It was the same like 3. And the divisibility criteria for number 8 is if last, if last 3 digits Form, form a number multiple multiple of eight. This is the criteria. If last three digits form a number multiple of eight. In this case, if this is true, our number is divisible by eight. Uh, let's prove it. Assume we have number A, B, C, D, which is equal to A times 1000 plus B times 100 plus C times 10 plus D times 1. And of course, this element is divisible by 8 because 1000 is equal to 125 times 8 and if we had a bigger number we had here also some uh, uh, digit a1 a2 a3 and so on all of these digits are uh, would give us a number and like this like this every numbers every digits um, every elements of the representation uh, would be divisible by 8 so everything which is here is divisible by 8 
and if if this part is divisible by 8 then our number will be divisible by 8 but once again um, this is a decimal representation for number BCD BCD we write it 0 1 2 has a decimal representation b times 10 squared plus c times 10 plus d times 1 and this is exactly what we see here that's why if our number last three digits of our number last three digits of our number form a number multiple of 8 then our number is divisible by 8 let's look at examples 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 for example number 48168 is divisible by 8 because because number formed by last three digits 168 which is is divisible by 8 obviously is divisible by 8 that's why our number is divisible by 8 the second example let's have a number 5 million 70 783,160 is divisible by 8 because the number formed by last three digits 160 is divisible by 8 um, it was everything I wanted to uh, teach you for this tutorial thank you very much like us and subscribe to see new videos on Open Math Camp. In this tutorial, we are going to learn prime and composite numbers, and we will learn uh, ancient algorithm called sieve of Eratos Fins for defining prime numbers not bigger than any number n. Let's get started. <clears throat> Any number bigger than 1 have at least two divisors, 1 and number itself. Let's write down um, any natural number, any number bigger than 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and so on. Any number positive and bigger than 1 has at least two divisors, 1 and number itself. Let's take as an example number 8. This number 8 can be divided by 1 and 8 divided by 1 is 8. Also, as any number, number 8 can be divided to itself, to the 8. And 8 divided by 8 is 1. Um, beside two trivial divisors that any number uh, has, 1 and 8, number itself. Number 8 also has two non-trivial divisors, like 2.
8 divided by 2 is 4. And 4. 8 divided by 4 is 2. Let's write down all divisors of number 8. 1, 2, 4, and 8. 1 and 8 are trivial divisors. And uh, 2 and 4 are non-trivial divisors beside 1 and 8. Uh, let's gi give a definition of prime number. Prime number, prime number, by definition, um, positive bigger than one number number that has only only trivial Devices, devices, one and number itself, number itself. Examples of prime numbers are two, two can be divided by one and number itself two. Three, three also can be divided only by one and number itself three. Number four is not, number four is not prime number because beside one and number itself four, it also can be divided by two. Number five, is prime number and number six is not prime number because beside trivial divisors one and six it also can be divided by two and three number seven is prime number and number eight as we already noted is not prime number because beside trivial divisors one and eight it also can be divided by two and four uh, next, let's uh, define what is a composite number. Composite number Composite number is a number which is not prime number. For example, number four is a composite number because beside uh, beside um, divisors 1 and 4, it also has non-trivial uh, divisors such as 2, non-trivial divisor 2. Number 6 is a composite number because beside divisors 1 and 6, it also has divisors 2 and 3. Number 8, as we already know, is also com composite number because it has a non-trivial divisors 2 and 4. Okay, let's next um, explain what is an uh, algorithm called sieve of Eratosthenes. Sieve of Eratosthenes. This algorithm is very ancient algorithm uh, for finding prime numbers up to any given number. Say number n, which is equal to 49 
in our case. Uh, this algorithm is called after Greek mathematician Eratosthenes, who lived 2,200 years ago. And to implement this algorithm, we first have to write down all the numbers up to our given number 49. Let's do it. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six. 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, and that's all. To implement this algorithm, we first, um, by definition, we know that number one is not prime number. Uh, let's take the first prime number, two, and we will cross out all the multiples of our number two. Then we take another number and we cross out all the multiples of this number. And we do it up to number 7 because we have that 7 squared is 49. 7 squared is 49. And we implement our algorithm up to square root of last number, our number 49, which is 7. And we cross out all the multiples of number 7, and we do not cross out multiples of the next number 8. Because um, in other numbers, all the numbers after 7 will be multiples of the number prior to our number 7, including 7. <clears throat> Let's implement an algorithm. Uh, as I said, we take the first prime number 2 and we cross out all the multiples of our number 2. 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, 42, 44, 46, 48. Um, all numbers we crossed out are not prime numbers. As uh, we know, um, we are looking for prime numbers and we crossed out numbers which are not prime numbers. Uh, next number, number three, uh, will be next prime number. This is prime number and by definition this is divisible to three number itself and one. And this is not divisible to another numbers, such as 2, because we already crossed out all the multiples of number 2. That's why number 3 is prime number. This is next prime number. Let's cross out all the multiples of number 3, and these crossed out numbers will be not prime number, composite number. Composite numbers. Let's do it. Uh, number 6 is already crossed out. Number 9, 12 is crossed out, 15, 18 is crossed out, 21, 24 is crossed out, 27, 30 is crossed out, 33, 36 is crossed out, 39, 42 is crossed out, uh, 45, and 48 is crossed out. Uh, next, we take the next number, which is not crossed out, uh, number 5. And this number 5 will be prime number. 
And by definition, this is divisible only to one and number itself, number five. And this is not divisible to previous number two, three, and so on, because we already crossed out all the multiples of these numbers. So cross out all the multiples of number five. Number 10 is already crossed out. Number 15 is crossed out. 20 is crossed out. 25. 30 is crossed out. 35. 40 is crossed out. 45 is crossed out. And that's all. The next and the last number, number 7, will be um, prime number. And by definition, this number is divisible only to one and number itself. 7. This number is not divisible to any number uh, prior to number 7 because we already crossed out all the multiples of these numbers. <coughs> Let's cross out all the multiples of number 7. 14 is crossed out, 21 is crossed out, 28 is crossed out, 35 is crossed out, 42 is crossed out and only number we have to cross out is 49. And that's all. And we found all the numbers and not crossed out numbers will be prime numbers. These numbers are, as we see prior to 7, 2, 3, 5, 7. And the next not crossed out numbers are 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, 31, 37, 41, 43, and 47. These numbers are prime numbers prior to our given number 49. So we implemented our algorithm and let's write down the result of this algorithm and write that all, all, all primes less than 49 are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, 31, 37, 41, 43, and 47. So we uh, found every prime number less than our given number 49 and implemented sieve of Eratosthenes algorithm. It was everything I wanted to talk about for this tutorial and thank you very much for your time. Like us and subscribe to see new videos on Open Math Camp. In this tutorial, we will talk about prime number factorization or factorization into prime factors or um, representation of any composite number as a multiplication of prime numbers. Uh, we have a result in um, mathematics that every composite number can be represented uniquely as a product of prime factors. At the end of this tutorial, you will learn how to write any composite number uh, as a multiplication of prime numbers, as in this example you see now. Uh, let's get started. We will uh, describe an algorithm uh, using several examples. The first example which describes our algorithm, example, example one. Uh, let's write um, factorization into prime numbers uh, for number n 1984. Uh, to do this, we um, write 1984 um, 
we divide this number by two because uh, if you watched um, previous tutorials, you know that divisibility criteria for number two is that last number must be even or equal to zero. Since four is even number, uh, actually this is obvious, but anyway, um, this is divisible by two and result will be 992. This is also divisible by two and it will be 496. This is also divisible by two and we have 284. Divide by number two and we have 124. Divisible by two and we have 62. This is also divisible by 2 and we have 39, uh, 31, sorry. 31 is prime number and this is uh, not divisible by 2, of course. This is only divisible by 31 and we have a finishing point of our algorithm 1. That's why um, we write that as a result of this algorithm, our number 1984 is divisible, uh, sorry, is can be represented as a multiplication of 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 31. All these numbers are prime numbers, so we represented our number as a multiplication of prime numbers. And shortly, this can be written as 2 to the power of 6 times 31. And this is the result. This is the representation of our number as a multiplication of prime numbers. A next example, example number 2. Example number two. Uh, this is uh, about writing number 1050 as a multiplication of prime numbers. Uh, let's do it. Let's write 1050. And this number obviously is divisible uh, by number two because last uh, digit is zero. And if you don't know divisibility criteria uh, by numbers 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 9, uh, watch previous tutorials. Uh, if we divide 1050 by the number 2, we will have 525. This number is not divisible by 2 because last number is not even or zero. Is this number divisible by number three, the next prime number? Um, using divisibility criteria for number three, we have to check is the sum of the digits five plus two plus five, is this number divisible by number three? This is 12 and this is divisible by three, that's why answer is yes. So, 525 is divisible by 3 and result will be 175. Is this number divisible by number 3? 1 plus 7 plus 5 is uh, 13. 13 is not divisible by 3, that's why answer is no. So 175 is not divisible by 3. Next uh, prime number is number 5. Uh, very important note is that I forget, forgot to mention is that for number 1050, we know all the prime numbers, all the prime numbers prior to this number that this, any of this number can potentially divide our number. And we can write every prime number less than 1050 using 
uh, Eratosthenes algorithm described in um, previous tutorial. So this number two, three, five, and so on, we already know these numbers using uh, algorithm uh, of Eratosthenes, sieve of Eratosthenes. So uh, 175 is not divisible by three. Next prime number is five. Is this number divisible by five? Yes, of course, because last digit is five. And if we divide our number by five, result will be 35. 35 is also divisible by five. Uh, we divide this number by five and we have seven. Seven is prime number and this is divisible only by the next number seven. And we have finishing point of our algorithm. That's why our number 1050 can be represented as a multiplication of prime numbers 2 times 3 times 5 times 5 times 7. Or in shorter form, this is 2 times 3 times 5 squared uh, times 7. And so we found a representation of our number as a multiplication of prime numbers. Or oh, this is the prime number factorization of number 1050. Next example, example number three. Example number three, let's write um, more complex numbers, say 14,000. 700 14700 um let's begin write 14700 this number is divisible by 2 because last digit is 0 uh, then it will be 7350 and this number is also divisible by 2 because last number is 0. Uh, then it will be 3,675. Is this number divisible by 2? No, because last digit is not even number and or 0. Uh, is this number divisible by 3? Let's check it. 3 plus 6 plus 7 plus 5 is equal to 21. So that's why, yes. So our number 3675 is divisible by number 3. And if we divide, for example, using calculator, we um, have 1225. Is this number divisible by number 3. Let's check it. 1 plus, plus 2 plus 2 plus 5 is equal to 10. And 10 is not divisible by 3. That's why our number is not divisible by 3. Next prime number is number 5. Is this number divisible by 5? Yes, this number is divisible by 5. And if we divide, we have 245. Is this number divisible by 5? Yes. And result will be 49. 49 is divisible by next prime number 7. And result will be 7. 7 by 7 is 1, which is finishing point of our algorithm. And as a result, we have that our number 14 thousand fourteen thousand seven hundred can be represented as two times two times three times five times five times seven times seven or in shorter form this is two squared times three times 
5 squared times 7 squared. And this is a factorization of our number. Prime number factorization of our number. So now we can implement uh, our algorithm and to write representation of any composite number as a multiplication of prime numbers. It was everything I wanted to talk about for this tutorial. Thank you very much for your time. Like us and subscribe to see new videos on Open Math Camp. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about greatest common divisor or shortly GCD. At the end of this tutorial, you will be able to find GCD or greatest common divisor of any set of numbers uh, as in this example. Let's get started. Um, common divisor of several numbers is a divisor of each of them. For example, if we have numbers 6, 12, and 18, then we see that number 2, number 2 uh, divides all our three numbers, 6, 12, and 18. And our numbers are divisible by number 2. Our numbers are also divisible by number 3 uh, and number 6. But between these uh, divisors, number 6 is the biggest. And this number is called greatest, greatest common divisor, or shortly G, C, sorry, G, C, D. Um, this is the definition of GCD. This is just the greatest common divisor of the set of numbers. Let's um, explain this definition, the concept of GCD, uh, using examples. Example number one. Example. Um, let's calculate the GCD for numbers 28, 20, and 12. Uh, obviously, by simple inspection, we can see that number two uh, divides all our numbers, and all our numbers are divisible by number two. Also, our numbers are divisible by number four, and uh, this number, number 4, is the biggest common divisor of our numbers. That's why the GCD of 28, 20, and 12 will be 4. Next, the GCD of numbers 5, 20, and 50 It's obvious to see that 5 is, is the GCD because 5 divides uh, each of these three numbers. And this is the biggest number because one of these number, uh, numbers is 5. Uh, for small numbers, we can find GCD just by ins inspection. But for big numbers, we have to use prime number factorization. Watch our previous tutorials and you will uh, understand what is the prime number factorization. And then by, we can uh, say that GCD will be the multiplication of all common prime factors, multiplication of common prime factors with the smallest exponent in each factorization. Let's see this in examples. Example. Example. Now let's find GCD. GCD of numbers 
1984 and 1050. Using prime number factorization, we write 1984 is 2 to the power of 6 times 31. And 1050 is equal to 2 times 3 times 5 squared times 7. And we have to take common prime number factors. Only common prime number factor is 2. And other numbers, 31 is not common because we cannot see 31 in second factorization. Also, number 3, uh, 5, and 7 uh, are not common. That's why only common prime number is 2. Let's write 2. And write the smallest exponent in each factorization. Here we have 1, the smallest exponent. That's why it will be 1, which is 2. So greatest common divisor of these two numbers is 2. Another example, another example, uh, let's find GCD, greatest common divisor of numbers 1050 and 14,700. Using prime number factorization, we find that 1050, we have already actually, I will not write it again. For 14,700, prime number factorization will be 2 squared times 3 times 5 squared times 7 squared. And um, common, uh, in this case, the common prime number will be between these two factorization, this factorization and this factorization. Uh, two with the smallest two with the smallest exponent will be two to the power one times three to the power one times five to the power two because in, in first factorization we have five to the power of two in this factorization and here we also have five to the power two but seven but seven uh, here will be with the power of two and here with the power of one so here we have that seven to the power of one and if we multiply these numbers it will be again 1050 that's why greatest common divisor of these two numbers is 1050 which is equal to one of our numbers that's why uh, obviously the first number have to divide the second number uh, another example more complex example will be to find GCD of numbers 200 and 34, 1080, and 8100. What will be the greatest common divisor of these three numbers? Using prime number factorization, 234 will be 2 times 3 to the powers of 2 times 13. 1080 will be 2 to the powers of 3 times 3 to the powers of 3 times 5 and uh, 8100 will be 2 to the powers of 2 times 3 to the powers of 4 times 5 to the powers to the power of 2 so let's write gcd 2 is common is common prime, fact, prime factor in this factorization and uh, 
smallest exponent is 1. So write 2 times uh, next number 3 is also common prime factor. And the smallest factor is 2. That's why we write 3 to the power, to the power of 2 times uh, number 13 is not common. 5 also is not common. That's why uh, answer here will be 2 times 3 to the power of 2, which is 18 which is 18. So 18 is greatest common divisor of these three numbers because by definition, 18 divides each of these three numbers. And this is the biggest number which divides these three numbers. Uh, next, let's define um, so-called co-prime numbers. Co or prime, or we also write co prime numbers. If um, GCD greatest common divisor of two numbers a and b is equal to one, then these two numbers a and b are called co prime numbers because uh, greatest common divisor of these two numbers is one. Uh, it's not necessarily numbers A and B uh, must be prime numbers. For example, GCD of two numbers 15 and 22 is obviously one um, because 15 can be written as three times five and 22 is two times 11. That's why these two numbers, 15 and 22, are co-prime numbers, but each of them uh, is not prime number. That's why the concept of co-prime number is not about prime numbers. It's about uh, GCD to be equal to 1. Uh, it was everything I wanted to talk about for this tutorial. Thank you very much. Like us and subscribe to see new videos on Open Math Camp. In this tutorial, we will talk about least common multiple, or shortly LCM, of numbers. At the end of this tutorial, you will be able to find least common multiple of any uh, two, three, or several numbers. Let's get started. A uh, least common multiple is of several numbers is a multiple of each of them. Smallest multiple of each of them. Once again, a uh, common multiple of several numbers is a multiple of each of them. For example, 9, 15, and 10 have a number... 180 as common multiple because each of these numbers 9, 15, and 10 divides uh, 180. But beside 180, number 90 is also common multiple. Uh, from these two numbers, number 90 is um, the smallest number and this is the smallest number that numbers 9, 15 and 10 divides. divide. That's why this 90 is called uh, least common multiple of these numbers and we write LCM, least common multiple of 9, 15 and 10 is equal to 90. For small numbers, LCM can be found by simple inspection, but for big numbers, LCM is equal to the multiplication of each factor in prime number factorization that once appear in any factorization with maximum exponent 
on each factorization. Uh, to make it clear, let's um, give examples. Example number one. Example. Uh, let's find least common multiple LCM for numbers 252, 441, and 1080. Using prime number factorization, we write factorization for each our numbers for each of our number uh, for first number it will be 2 to the power of 2 times 3 to the power of 2 times 7 441 is equal to 3 to the power of 2 times 7 to the power of 2 and 1000 and 80 is equal to 2 to the power of 3 and 3 to the power 3 times 5. Um, so LCM, least common multiple, will be equal to, we see that we have at least number 2 at least at one factorization and the biggest exponent in all factorization in each factorization is 3 so we write 2 to the power of 3 times uh, 3 we have uh, in each factorization and the maximum and the biggest greatest Exponent is 3, so we write 3 to the power of 3 times 7 because 7 uh, here and here, and the power of 7 is 2 times uh, only 5 left. So this is uh, LCM of our numbers, and if we multiply and write this number, it will be equal to, uh, write it here, above, it will be equal to 52,920. So this number, 52,920, is least common multiple. Each of our number, 252, 441, and 1080, each of this number uh, divide 52,920, and this 52,920, the smallest number that three of our numbers divide. Uh, this is the LCM, the least common multiple. Let's solve Let's give another example. Uh, LCM of numbers 234, 1080, 8100. Using prime number factorization, we write factorization for each other number. It will be 2 times 3, 3 to the power 2 times 13. The second number, 1080, will be equal to 2 to the power of 3 times 3 to the power 3 times 5. Uh, 8100 will be equal to 2 to the power of 2 times 3 to the power 4, times 5 to the power 2. And least common multiple, in this case, uh, will be equal to, um, let's write here, equal to 
we have two here, here and here, and maximum exponent is three, sorry. Maximum exponent is three. That's why we write two to the power three times three we have, number three we have here, here and here. And maximum exponent is four. We write three to the power to power four times times 13 times five to power to the power of two. And if we multiply these numbers, we will have 210,600. And this number will be least common multiple of our three numbers. It was everything I wanted to talk about for this tutorial. Thank you very much. Like us and subscribe to see new videos on Open Math Camp. In this tutorial, we are going to learn fractions, proper and improper fra fractions, basic definition and basic understanding of fractions. Let's get started. A uh, fraction is a part of unity or several parts of unity. Uh, what we mean by this? Assume we have a um, unit, unity, and um, we divide our unity to different parts. For example, we divide it to five parts. Two, three, four, five. Assume these parts are equal. One, two, three, four, and five. It can be not five parts, but it can be any number of parts. In this case, um, assume we have a fraction uh, 3 over 5. And uh, in this case, number 3, uh, number 5 first is a um, denominator. Denominator. Denominator um, number which indicates how many parts a unit is divided into. In our case, our unit is divided into five parts and uh, our denominator indicates the number five. How many parts a unit is divided into. And number three, is called numerator. Numerator. Uh, how many parts are taken? In this case, three over five means by definition, let's write it here. This means three times one over five. It means 1 over 5 or 1 fifth, which is actually this, this piece, this piece uh, of our unity is 1 fifth and uh, 3 fifths or 3 times 1 over 5 is 3 part of this, 3 part of this Our piece. So this is a um, picture of uh, 3 over 5 um, or 3 fifths. Uh, let's talk about what is a proper function, uh, sorry, proper fraction. Uh, proper fraction. Proper fraction 
uh, it's a fraction when numerator is less than denominator. For example, 3 over 5, our numerator is 3, 3 and uh, denominator is 5, and 3 is less than 5. That's why uh, this fraction is called proper fraction. For example, 1 over 2, 4 over 5, uh, 99 over 100. In all these cases, numerator 3, 1, 4, 99 is less than uh, correspondingly 5, 2, uh, 5, and 100. So these uh, fractions, these kind of fractions are called proper frac fractions. Uh, we also have um, the case when, let's write it here, uh, the first case, first case, first case when numerator, numerator is less, less than denominator. We have these examples, and the second case, second case when numerator, numerator is equal to denominator. In this case, uh, for example, four over four, it will be one. We just have to divide uh, numerator by denominator and four divided by 4 will be 1. It can be, for example, 5 over 5, which is 1, or 99 over 99, which is 1, or unity. Um, so this kind of um, fractions, when numerator is equal to denominator, actually uh, are equal to 1. Uh, another case, case number 3, when numerator is bigger, uh, greater than denominator. In this case, for example, um, 17 over 5, 12 over 5, 13 over 4, and so on. In this case, um, this kind of fractions, 1 and 2, oh, sorry, 2 and 3, and these cases are called improper functions, where uh, when numerator number Case 1 is called proper fraction, uh, and case 2 and 3, uh, are these cases are called improper fraction. Uh, let's talk about basic calculations with improper fractions, with examples, because only examples can explain how to deal with fractions. Uh, 7. For example, over 7 will be 1. We just have to divide 7 by 7. 9 over 9 will be 1. And any number uh, divided to itself will be 1. Uh, general case when we have P over Q, this fraction, uh, we have to divide, we have to divide uh, P by the number Q and if fraction is equal to the first case when division is exact when P is equal to Q and in this case the fraction is equal to quotient like uh, these examples but uh, when uh, Division is exact. We can also have not only one, but for example, 
49 over 7. And we, if we divide 49 by 7, we have 7. It can be 42 over 6, and it will be uh, also 7. And for example, 56 over 8 or over 7, it will be 8, and so on. So the first case when uh, division is exact, in this case, uh, we will have a whole number. Uh, the second case when um, division is not exact and we have to write a partial quotient. For example, 17 over 5. Since we already know that, for example, 17 is 5 times 3, which is 15, which is 15, plus 2. So we have uh, 5 3 times inside 17. That's why we write 3, 3, and uh, we have a remainder 2. And uh, denominator is staying unchanged. So in this case, this tree, number three, is called partial quotient. Partial quotient. Number two is a uh, remainder. And the denominator, 5, uh, stays unchanged. Uh, let's give another examples. Like us and subscribe to see new videos on Open Math Camp. Assume we have a fraction, an uh, improper fraction, when denominator is bigger than, when numerator is bigger than denominator. Assume this is 19 over 4. And since we have 4 inside 19 4 times, and it will be 16, and remainder is 3, we write three, th number 3, and uh, denominator is staying unchanged. Um, another example is uh, 50 over 7. And since we have 7 inside 50, 7 times, and it will be 49, we write 7, and 1 is a remainder, and 7 is unchanged. Another example, um, 35 over 6, and since we have 6 inside 35, 5 times, and it will be 30, we write 5, and 5 is a remainder, and uh, denominator is unchanged. Um, this kind of numbers, uh, this kind of numbers are called mixed numbers. Mixed numbers. Mixed number, because we have a whole part in this number and fraction. For example, the first number, by definition, is equal to 4 plus 3 over 4. And 4 is a whole part, and 3 over 4 is a fraction. Uh, this will be equal to 7 plus 1 over 7. And this is equal to 5 plus 5 over 6. Uh, so this is a mixed number with whole part and uh, fraction. Um, as I said, uh, seven and thirteen over five. Uh, here we have um, improper number because this fraction is improper, improper, because uh, numerator is bigger than denominator, 
And let's write it as a proper number, proper mixed number with whole part and with fraction, which is proper fraction. Um, by definition, this is equal to 7 plus 13 over 5. But on the same time, we have that um, 13 over 5 is equal to, um, we have 5 inside 13 just two times. 2 and uh, 3 is a remainder. 5 stays unchanged, which is equal to 2 plus 3 over 5. And we write it like 7 plus 2 plus 3 over 5, which is 9 plus 3 over 5. Or in other form, it will be 9 and 3 over 5. And in this case, since this fraction is all already a proper fraction because numerator is less than denominator, uh, we have a mixed number which has a proper form. And here we had improper form. So we uh, always can write improper fraction or improper mixed number as a proper fraction or correspondingly proper mixed number. Another example is 5 and 18 over 5. Let's write this improper mixed number with improper fraction. This fraction is improper because 18 is bigger than 5. Let's write it as a proper number with proper fraction. Uh, it will be 5 plus 18 over 5. And uh, in this case, 18 over 5 uh, can be written as 3 because we have uh, 5 inside 18 3 times and remainder is 3 and by definition this is 3 plus 3 over 5 and if we write it we have this and whole numbers we have that 5 plus 3 will be 8 8 and plus 3 over 5 and in another form it will be 8 and 3 over 5 uh, that's all um, often we need uh, improper fraction for the purposes of multiplication we will study later so um, we already know how to write improper fraction as a proper fraction and let's solve uh, an opposite problem how having proper fraction write it in a proper way or how having proper mixed number write it as an improper fraction uh, examples uh, assume we have um, 9 and 3 over 5 uh, this is mixed number because we have a whole number and a fraction and since in this fraction 3, number 3 is less than 5, this is a proper fraction, that's why our mixed number is a proper mixed number. And um, to write it as an improper fraction, we perform operations. The first, we have to multiply 9 to the 5. 9 times 5 will be 45. And second operation, we um, write 45 plus numerator 3, and it will be 48. And result will be 48 divided by unchanged uh, denominator. And that's all. And uh, that's all. And 48 over 5, this is already improper fraction. So we can write 
proper mixed number as an improper fraction. Another example is 4 and 3 over 4. We multiply 4 uh, to the number 4, it will be 16, and 16 plus 3 is 19. Denominator is unchanged. That's all. And uh, this improper fraction, like this and this, will be further used uh, for the purposes of multiplication of fractions. It was everything I wanted to talk about for this tutorial. Thank you very much for your attention. Like us and subscribe to see new videos on Open Math Camp. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about reducing reducing fractions. Um, the value of fraction is not changed if numerator and denominator are multiplied by the same number. For example, if we have a fraction 3 over 4 and we multiply it and if we multiply numerator and denominator by the same number, for example, 3, then uh, as a result, we have 9 over 12. And uh, this right side will be equal to the left side. Um, so result is unchanged. Another example is, say, 1 over 3, and if you multiply bo both sides by the number 5, the result will be 5 over 15, and uh, this is equal to this. Another example is 1 over 3, and if we multiply both sides by the number 2, the result will be this, 2 over 6. And again, these numbers uh, are same numbers. And this is called reducing fraction to higher terms, uh, because the numbers on the right side are bigger than left side. So this is reducing fraction to higher terms. Uh, we also have um, opposite reducing to lower terms. Uh, it works uh, to the opposite side. For example, uh, 9 over 12, 9 over 12, uh, the both numerator and denominator can be divided by the same number, say 3, and the result will be 3 over 4. And these two numbers are equal. This is uh, reducing to lower terms. Another example is 5 over 15. Both sides can be divided by 5. And result will be 1 over 3. And 1 over 3 is equal to 5 over 15. One more example. Uh, 2 over 6. Both sides 2 can be divided by 2. And 6 can be divided by 2. And the result will be 1 over 3. And 1 over 3 is equal to 2 over 6. Once again, this is called reducing to lower terms. Um, reducing to lower terms to the lowest terms can be performed by dividing number, numerator and denominator by GCD. Or, once again, we can reduce to the not lower but lowest terms by dividing numerator and denominator by 
a greatest common divisor. Example. 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 Uh, for example, we have 108 or 144. Um, if you watched previous tutorials, you know what is GCD, greatest common divisor of two numbers or several numbers. In this case, GCD of 108 and 144 will be equal to 36. And in other words, 36 is greatest common divisor of the number 108 and 144. And we can write, we can divide numerator and denominator by this GCD, greatest common divisor. This is divisor and this is the greatest device. And result will be 3 over 4. Uh, we can actually reduce to the lowest terms. This term is the lowest because we cannot divide the both sides, uh, numerator and denominator. And this is the finishing point. We cannot divide both sides anymore. But we can receive lowest terms, not... Uh, uh, using GCD without calculation of GCD. We, we, we have to just divide the both sides again and again when it's possible. Uh, let's reduce to the lowest term this fraction 108 over 144. Obviously, the both, both numbers are can be divided by number 2, we also know the uh, divisibility criterion for number 2, 3, 4, and so on for number 9. Watch our previous tutorials. And if we divide the both sides by number 2, the result will be 54 over 72. Here we write, we divide it by number 2. Next, uh, we can divide the both sides again by the number 2, and the result will be 27 by 36. Here we divide it by 2 again. And next, it's easy to see that the both sides, numerator and denominator, can be divided by number 3, and the result will be 9 over 12. Here we divided both sides by number 3. Next we can divide again both sides by number 3 and it will be 3 over 4. We divide it by 3 again. And this fraction is the lowest term fraction. And is equal to this fraction. And if we multiply these numbers, we will receive 36, which is equal to greatest common divisor, GCD, of these two numbers. It was everything I wanted to talk, to talk about for this tutorial. Thank you very much. Like us and subscribe to see new videos on Open Math Camp. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about comparing fractions and we will learn the concept of common denominator and we will learn how to compare any two or several fractions. Let's get started. Uh, if two fractions have the same numerator, say 1 over 3 and 1 over 4, then obviously the larger fraction is that with smaller denominator because number 1 is divided by smaller number and that's why 1 over 3 
is bigger. Uh, another example, 5 over 8 and 5 over 9. Here, because 5 over 8 uh, is bigger because 5 is divided by 8, and since it's divided by smaller number, the number 5 over 8 is bigger. If we divide by smaller number, result will be bigger. Um, it was the case when uh, uh, numerators were equal. And what if denominators are equal? So if two fractions have the same denominator, the greater fraction is that with greater numerator. For example, 6 over 7 and 3 over 7. Um, here, denominators are the same. And uh, the bigger number is this number uh, because the bigger number is divided by the same number. And here the smaller number, here the smaller number is divided by 7. And here the bigger number is divided by 7. That's why if uh, denominators are the same, in this case we have 7 in both cases, but numerator is bigger. That's why uh, the fraction with bigger numerator is greater. Uh, another example. 5 over 6 and uh, 7 over 6. In both cases, denominators are the same, 6 and 6, but um, this fraction is bigger because greater number is divided by the same number. Uh, that's all. Another Another information about this comparing is that if we want to, in order to compare two fractions with different numerators and denominators, one or both fraction must be transformed so that denominators are the same. For example, if we have 3 over 8 and 7 over 12, how to compare these fractions because denominators are different and numerators are different. And we have to transform both fractions so that uh, denominators are equal. That's why we multiply the first fraction by 12, the both sides by 12, and as we know, the result, resulting fraction will be the same. Why 12? Because here, this is the 12. So we multiply 8 uh, by 12 and 3 also by 12. Second fraction is multiplied by 8. The both sides, numerator and denominator, are multiplied by number 8. And that's why uh, we will have as a result, uh, this fraction will be equal to, denominator will be 96 and numerator will be uh, 36. And this fraction will be... Uh, Denominator will be also 96, but numerator will be 56. And now we can compare these two fractions. And of course, the fraction with bigger numerator is bigger because, um, as we already know, the bigger number is divided by the same number, 96. Um, another example is, um, uh, we also have to say that this 
uh, process when we when we find uh, this denominator is called finding finding common denominator Denomi denominator and 96 is common denominator um, next let's give another example and compare 5 over 6 and 7 over 8 um, we multiply this this side is multiplied by 8 both sides and this fraction is multiplied by 6 and we have 8 8 here we multiply by 6 and 6 and result will be 40 by 48 and here will be 42 by 48 and now we can compare and of course the second fraction is greater than first fraction let us find a common denominator for three fractions another example for example we have uh, three fractions 3 over 8 5 over 6 and 2 over 5 and let's transform these fractions the first second and first fraction so that um, we will have an equivalent fractions but denominators will be the same so this process is called defining the common denominator for three fractions um, we multiply the first first um, fraction by number 30 second fraction we multiply by 40 and third fraction is multiplied by 48 in all cases um, the value of fractions will stay the same and we will have the first fraction will be 90 over 240 the second fraction is 200 over 240 and third fraction is 96 is 96 over 240 and when our fra fractions have the same denominator we can compare any two of them for example the second uh, will be greater than the third fraction and of course second uh, will be in this case and of course the second fraction will be bigger than the first and if we compare um, first fraction and third fraction then of course uh, third fraction will be bigger than first fraction um, but in this case the common den denominator um, it's obvious that common denominator 240 was the multiplication of all denominators the first denominator was 8 second denominator was 6 and third denominator was 5 and if we multiply these numbers we will have 8 times 6 times 5 will be 240 and often finding strictly common denominator is easy but denominator can be too big we can find a common denominator but 
it can be less than 240. And to do this, we have to use um, least common multiple. And if you don't know what is least common multiple of several numbers, watch uh, previous tutorials. And let's um, solve this example using least common multiple. Again, we have the same fractions, uh, 3 over 8, 5 over 6, and 2 over 5. And we know that least common multiple, LCM, of these three numbers, 8, 6, and 5, will be uh, 8 is, can be represented as 2 to the power of 3. 6 can be represented to, as 2 uh, times 3. And 5 is just 5 to the power of 1. And least common multiple is, we take here 2 with uh, biggest, with greatest exponent, it will be 2 to the power of 3, times, times 3, times 3, and times 5, and it will be 120. So a least common multiple of numbers 8, 6, and 5 is equal to 120. And um, we have to multiply the first first fraction to number 15 to have 120. And the second fraction must, must be multiplied to the 20 to have here, to have here, 120 and third fraction must be multiplied to 24 to have here 120 and all these three fractions the value of them will be the same and as a result we will have uh, this fraction will be the first fraction will be um, 45 over 120 second fraction will be 100 over 120 and third fraction is 48 over 120 and of course we can easily compare any uh, these two fractions for example the first fraction is less than um, second fraction and if we compare second and third fraction of course the second fraction will be more than will be bigger than third fraction it was everything i wanted to talk about for this tutorial thank you very much like us and subscribe to see new videos on open math camp In this tutorial, we are going to learn adding and subtracting fractions. At the end of this tutorial, you will be able to add and subtract uh, any kind of fractions, including mixed numbers with the whole part and fractional part. Let's get started. When, um, first of all, when we if denominators of fractions are the same, then fractions can be added or subtract subtracted by adding or subtracting their numerators. For example, example. Assume um, four over seven plus six over seven. As I said. When we want to add or subtract two fractions with the same denominators, here we have same denominators of our fractions. Then we have to just 
add or subtract correspondingly uh, numerators of our fractions. In this case, um, and denominator will be the same. Denominator will stay, stay the same, uh, and 4 plus 6 will be 10. And 10 over 7, as we know from previous tutorials, can be written as 7 and, uh, uh, sorry, as 1 and 3 over 7. That's all. Another example, uh, assume 4 over 9 plus 7 over 9. And since denominators of our fractions are the same, then we can just add uh, um, denominator will stay the same and we just add um, numerators. It will be 11 and it can be written as 1 and 2 over 9. For example, if you write uh, 4 over 9 minus 7 over 9. This is a previous example, uh, but we have subtraction instead of um, addition. Then denominator will stay the same and 4 minus 7 will give us uh, minus 3. Minus 3 over 9 will be, my, we divide uh, numerator and denominator of our fraction by number 3 uh, and uh, we have 1 over 3. Uh, it was the main rule and um, next rule is what if our denominators differ? Then, of course, first we have to reduce fractions to common denominators. Uh, how to reduce fractions, two fractions to common denominator? Uh, it's very easy. You have to watch our previous tutorials uh, on arithmetic series of tutorials. Um, let's give an example. Examples. With, with different denominators. For example, uh, if we have 3 over 8 plus 5 over 6 and say minus 2 over 5, then we have to reduce to common denominators all these three, three fractions. And to do this, we have to know the concept of least uh, common multiple. If you don't know what is the least common multiple of numbers, watch previous tutorials. And least common multiple of numbers 8, let's write it with different color. Least common multiple of numbers 8, 6, and 5. Since uh, Prime number factorization of 8. Once again, what is a prime number factorization? Watch previous tutorials. Of 8 will be 2 to the power of 3. Uh, 6 will be 2 times 3. And 5 is just 5 to the power of 1. And if we write factorization of this, uh, if we want to find least common multiple of these three numbers, we take 2 with a maximum power and it will be 2 to the power of 3 times 3 and times 5. 2 to the power of 3 is 8 and 8 times 3 times 5 is 120. So uh, we have to reduce 3 our fractions to uh, the fractions with denominators 120. And since 100, 120 divided by 8, by 8, here is 8, will be 
15. Let's write here 15 to remember. 15. And uh, here, 120 divided by number 6 will be 20. Here we write 20. And 120 divided by 5 is 24. Divided by 5 is 24. So we have to um, then multiply the both sides of our three, three fractions uh, by these corresponding numbers. And it will be 3 times 15. And at the denominator, we write 8 times 15, which is 120. Plus 5 times 20 over 120. Minus 2 times 24 over 120. And then using our previous rule, because um, we transformed our three fractions to equivalent fractions, but now we have uh, same denominators for our three fractions, we can perform adding and subtraction. And uh, denominator will stay the same, 120, 3 times 15 is 45, plus 5 times 20 is 100, minus 2 times 24 is 48. And it will be 97 over 120. And that's all. This is answer. This is the final result of our example. Let's give another example. Um, another example. Example 4 over 5 plus 3 over 6. Um, the least common multiple of 5 and 6 will be 30. Uh, we multiply both sides uh, of our fractions by corresponding numbers. The first fraction, denominator 5, uh, we have to multiply by the number 6. And uh, 4 also multiplied by number 6. And uh, it will not change um, the value of our fraction, as we know, plus um, 3 over 6, we have to multiply by 5, and here also 5. And we have, and now we have two fractions, but with the same denominators, uh, 24 over 30, plus 15 over 30. And now we can use our previous rule. Uh, since we have same denominators, it will be 30. And numerators are added. It will be 39. 39. Now we can divide both sides of our fractions, of our fraction, Numerator, numerator and denominator by number 3, we have 13 over 10. And we can write our fraction as a mixed number. It will be 1 and 3 over 10, which is, by definition, is 1, which is equal to 1, plus 3 over 10. That's all. Let's give another example. Another example. Um, 7 over 9 plus 2 over 5. Now we transform our fractions to the two fractions with the same denominator. And the least common multiple of two numbers, 9 and 5, will be 45. We write first 
fraction is 45 and we have to multiply 7 by the number 5. Why 5? Because 45 divided by 9, 9 will give us 5. Uh, plus 45, and since 45 divided by 5 is 9, we multiply 2 times 9. And we have 45, 7 times 5 is 35, plus 2 times 9 is 18. And result will be 53 over 45. And we can write our fraction as a mixed number 1 because 53 divided by 45 is 1 and we have a remainder um, 8. And 45 will stay uh, the same. And this number is by definition 1 plus 8 of 45. That's all. Uh, let's talk about another rule which is very easy to understand. Um, what if we have two mixed numbers? One examples. We will give just examples because using examples um, it's very easy to understand the concept. 1 and 3 over 7 plus 3 and 2 over 9. How to easily add these two mixed numbers? Mixed numbers because we have whole part of our fraction and the fractional part of our fraction. Um, it's very easy. We first have to uh, separately add or subtract whole parts. It will be 1 plus 3 and plus, and we separately add or subtract fractional parts. It will be 3 over 7 plus 2 over 9. And this will be 4. And this will be, let's perform it here. It will be um, 3 over 7 plus 2 over 9. Uh, it will be 63 because this common multiple of numbers 7 and 9 will be 63. And we have to multiply 3 to the number 9 plus 63. And we have to multiply 2 by the number 7. And we have, by the first rule, at, in the denominator we have uh, as the same number 63. And numerator will be equal to 27 plus 14. Which is 41 over 63. And uh, our... Answer will be 4 plus 41 over 63, which is equal to, by definition, this symbol means that this is equal by definition to 4 and 41 over 63. And let's give last example. Last example, assume we have 11 minus 10 and 5 over 7. Um, this example is solved along the same line and very by definition, we know that 11 is equal to, by definition, 10 and 1 
over 1, which is 10 plus 1 over 1, which is 11. And let's write our number 11 as 10 and 1 over 1 minus same mixed number. And now we um, subtract whole parts 10 minus 10, which is 0, which is equal to 0. And the plus fractional parts 1 over 1 minus 5 over 7. And 1 over 1 is the same as 7 over 7. 7 over 7 minus 5 over 7. It will be 2 over 7. And uh, we have 0 plus 2 over 7, which is 2 over 7. It was everything uh, for today. Thank you very much. Um, and don't um, forget to like us and subscribe. Have a good day. Bye. In this tutorial, we are going to learn multiplication and division of fractions. At the end of this tutorial, you will be able to multiply and divide any two fractions, integer numbers or mixed numbers consisting of whole part and fractional part. Subscribe and like us and let's get started. Okay, uh, to multiply two fractions, we multiply numerator by numerator and denominator by denominator. For example, 3 over 4 uh, multiplied by 4 over 3. Um, first rule I already told you was to multiply two fractions, we multiply numerator by numerator and denominator by denominator. And if we have mixed numbers, we have to convert them to improper fractions before multiplying. And if you don't know what is a mixed number, watch our previous tutorials. And also, the third rule is that before multiplying, we have to cancel any common factors in the numerator and denominator. Let's, let's see this example. This is our example. 3 over 4 times 4 over 3. Uh, we multiply numerator by numerator and denominator by denominator. And as I said, we have to cancel um, any factors in numerator and denominator. Of course, um, 3 is divided, is cancelled out by 3, and 4 is cancelled out by 4. And we have 1 over 1, which is 1. Another example is um, 2 over 5 times 3 over 5. In this case, um, we cannot cancel any common factor and result will be 2 times 3, which is 6, and 5 times 5, which is 25. Um, more examples. Another example will be with uh, mixed numbers. Um, 2 and 1 over 12 times 1 and 7 over 20. And as we know, uh, as I already said, we have to transform our mixed numbers into improper fractions and how to do it, watch our previous tutorials. Um, the first fraction, when it's um, transformed into improper fraction, will be 
uh, 2 times 12 is 24, and 24 plus 1 is 25. So this is 25 over 12. Second fraction, second mixed number, when trans transformed into, into improper fraction, is 1 times 20, 20 plus 7, 27 over 20. Uh, next, we have to perform cancellation. Um, for example, 5 is 5 times 5, and 27 is 9 times 3. 12 is 4 times 3, and 20 is 4 times 5. If we, for example, we can cancel this 5 by this 5, and this 3 is cancelled by this 3, three and we have uh, what we have left. We have um, 5 times 9 over 4 times 4. This will be 45 over 16. And we have, if we divide 45 by number 16, we have 2. And remainder will be 13 over 16. 13, uh, 13 is remainder, and uh, we all, all already know how to uh, write this in this uh, form, mixed number. If you don't understand it, watch our previous tutorial. Um, next example is with mixed number. Assume we have 4 and 1 over 2 times 4 over 7. Let's add another element times 4 and 2 over 3. How about this? Uh, let's transform our fractions into improper fractions. The first will be 4 times 2, 8, plus 1, 9, 9 over 2, times 4 over 7, times 4 times 3 is 12, 12 plus 2 is 14, 14 over the same number 3. Now we perform cancellation. Uh, 9 is 3 times 3, 4 is 2 times 2, and 14 is 2 times 7. Uh, when we perform cancellation, this number 3 is cancelled by this number 3, 2 is cancelled by this number 2, and this 7 is cancelled by this number 7. So. We have in uh, numerator 3 times 2 times 2, and denominator is 1. This is 12. Um, let's give another example. Assume we have one number, assume one number is whole number. 5 times 4 and 5. And since 4 over 5, since 5 can be represented as 5 over 1 times 4 over 5, and our 5s are cancelled out, we have just 4 over 1, which is 4. Um, one more example. Assume we have 5 over 8 times 7 times 4 over 15. Um, let's rewrite it. And since 7 can be represented as 7 over 1, now we perform cancellations. Um, 8 is, as we know, can be written as 
4 times 2, 15 is 5 times 3. And when we perform cancellation, this 5 is cancelled by this 5. And this 4 is cancelled by this 4. What we have left? 7 over 2 times 3, which is 7 over 6. And we can write it as a mixed number. Um, 1 and 1 over 6. And one more example, more examples, more experience. 4 and 3 over 4 times 2 and 5 over 6. Um, first, let's repeat rules. First, we transform our mixed number our mixed numbers into improper fractions then we perform cancellation and uh, before we multiply numerator by numerator and uh, denominator by denominator so let's again transform our mixed number into improper fraction 4 by 4 is 16 16 plus 3 is 19 19 over 4 times 2 times 6 is 12 12 plus 5 is 17 17 over 6 next we perform um, cancellations we don't have any cancellations because a number 19 and 17 uh, are prime numbers if you don't know what is a prime number, watch our previous tutorials. And um, 19 times 17 will be 323. And 4 times 6 is 24. If you represent it as a mixed number, we have 13 whole 24s inside 323. So we write 13, 11 is a remainder, and 24, beautiful number. Next, um, let's talk about division of fractions. Division. Division of fractions. Um, rule is very simple to divide a number by a fraction just multiply number by reciprocal of fraction uh, reciprocal of fraction uh, for example if we have a fraction 6 over 7 reciprocal of this fraction is 7 over 6 we just interchange numerator and denominator So, reciprocal of, say, 3 over 4 will be 4 over 3. So, again, rule is that um, to divide a number by a fraction, just multiply this number by a reciprocal. Just change the denominator and numerator of fraction. Examples. Examples. Assume two over three divided by four over fifteen. Um, to perform this division, we multiply our two over three by a reciprocal of our fraction, which is fifteen over four. And as we already learned previously, just perform multiplication. Um, 4 is 2 times 2, and 15 is 3 times 5. 
we cancel 3 and 3 and 2 with 2. We have left 5 um, over 2, which is, which is 2, and 1 over 2, which is by definition 2 plus 1 over 2, which is 2 and 5, by the way. Another example of division is assume 1 and 3 over 5 divided by 3 and 1 over 5. Uh, first, again, we, as in the case of multiplication, transform our mixed numbers with whole part and fractional part into improper fraction. 1 times 5 is 5, 5 plus 3 is 8. 8 over 5 divided by 3 time, times 5 is 15, 15 plus 1 is 16, 16 over 5. And now we um, change our division into multiplication, but we have to um, take a reciprocal of the second number. It will be 5 over 16. We just changed, we just changed. numerator and denominator interchanging and uh, now we just perform our multiplication and we perform cancellation uh, 16 is 2 times 8 um, we cancel 5 and 5 and this 8 is cancelled by this 8 so answer will be 1 over 2 So it was everything um, for this time and um, subscribe our channel and like our videos. I will appreciate it very much. Thank you. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about arithmetic operations involving zero. Um, if you watch this tutorial until the end, you will be able, you will understand uh, any arithmetic operations that involves zero. Like us and subscribe and let's get started. First of all, let's talk about operations addition and subtraction. We will denote this as plus minus, as plus and minus, addition and subtraction. First of all, um, adding and subtracting zero to any number gives the same number. For example, 7 plus 0 leaves number 7 in its place, result be, will be the same. Or 7 minus 0 is also the same. We can write it 7 plus minus 0 is 7. Um, any number 2 and 1 over 3 plus minus 0 will be the same number and um, we can generally write um, for any number for any number a as i already um, told you once in previous tutorials this symbol in mathematics um, means for all all or any any so for any number a from the set of real numbers um, if we if we write a plus minus zero will be same number a this is kind of mathematical notation uh, next operation is multiplication. 
multiplication or multiplication um, zero times any number always gives zero um, for example three times zero gives zero and two and one over three times zero gives zero um, or we can write for any number a for any number a from the set of real numbers or for any real number a if we multiply our number by number by zero it will be zero next um Talk, let's talk about division. Division. The quotient or result of division of zero by any non-zero number is zero. For example, zero divided by five is zero. Or we can write it as zero divided by five is zero. Or 0 divided by 3 and 1 over 2 mixed non-zero number will al also give 0. Or we can write um, for any number A, for any real number A, which is not zero for any non-zero real number. If we divide zero by A, we will have zero. That's true because um, that's true and that's all. Let's not talk about philosophical problems in mathematics and be clear and simple. Next, let's talk about um, division. It was the first case. Second case is division of zero by zero. Division of zero by zero. Or we write zero by zero. So division of zero by zero is not, not determined. We cannot determine this. For example, let's give example. Examples. Uh, for example, we could set zero divided by zero as five because, because um, if we multiply 5 by number 0 it will give us a 0 we also could write 0 divided by 0 is 6 because because 6 times 0 is 0 so we have infinitely um, infinite number of solutions and this operation is not determined that's why 0 by 0 is not determined and next case when we have division of non-zero number by 0 when um, division of some number a and divided by number zero and where a is any number any real number as i said this symbol means any any non-zero number any non-zero real number divided by zero. 
How about this? In this case, we can show that the quotient doesn't exist. And as assume this quotient is equal to some number b, for example, assume this quotient is equal to b and no number satisfies this definition. We will show that b doesn't exist or we have no solution for this equation. Um, why is it so? For example, number 7 divided by number 0, we can write 2 because, because we, we, we could write 2, but 2 is not solution because 2 times 0 is 0. We could write 7 by 0 is 3, but 3 times 0 is 0. This is not solution. We could write um, 7 divided by 0 is 4, but this is not solution because 4 times 0 is 0. And for any number, 2, 3, 4, for any number, this is not solution. So we do not have a solution and uh, this operation is not meaningful. This is not meaningful operation. So we can write that for any number a, for any number a, which is not non-zero, um, this operation, division of any non-zero non number by zero is not meaningful in mathematics. So never divide by zero. Thank you very much. Uh, subscribe our channel and like our videos. I will appreciate it very much. Thank you. In this tutorial, we are going to learn decimal fractions and its properties. We already use decimal fractions, but here we will formally explain what is this and um, its properties. Uh, like us and subscribe and let's get started. If we have a um, fraction, common fraction with big denominator, then it's hard to perform calculations because big denominators um, means uh, it's quite hard to find common denominators. Uh, let's talk about how um, decimal fractions are written. For example, if we have six, six and floating point 203 uh, in decimal uh, numeral system, watch our previous tutorials, it's written as six, which is whole part, plus um, two over one, two, o two over 10, plus zero over 100, and plus three, or 1,000. Or in other words, um, 6 is 6 here is whole part. If it, this is a number of um, this is number actually number of 10 to the power 0 um, and um, 2 is number of 1 over 10 Num number of 1 over 10th or 10th um, and this 0 is number of Hundredth, and uh, this number three is a number number of thousandths, or number of one over one thousandths. This is actually um, called decimal representation of our decimal fraction, and in another form. Um, we can write this, our decimal fraction, 
uh, in different form, which is simple fraction. For example, our number 6 and 2 over 3 as, as a fraction, as mixed number fraction, can be written as 6 and 203 over 1000. And here, this 6 is called, uh, it can be called whole part. And this is mixed number because uh, from, we already know these kind of numbers. This is mixed number and 6 is whole part and 203 over 1000 is fractional part. So we can write uh, any decimal fraction as a mixed number as a fraction because if instead 6 we had 0 it would be um, simple fraction and by definition this is equal by definition this symbol means equal by definition this is uh, 6 plus 2 or 3 or 1000 um, let's give some, some examples. For example, 1.123 1 is equal to 1 and 123 over 1000, which is equal by definition, which is equal to 1 plus 123 over 1000. Another example is 4.56, which is equal to 4 and 56 over 100. And this is equal by definition 4 plus 56 over 100. Another example 0. 0, 1, 2. Uh, this is uh, in a, as a fraction is as a mixed number with whole part and fraction is equal to 0 and 12 over 1000 or by definition or, or th this can be written as simply 12 over 1000 which is by definition is equal to 0 plus 12 over 1000. So now we can write any decimal fraction as a fraction or in general form as mixed number with whole part and fractional part. Let's talk about uh, properties of decimal fractions. First of all, um, first property Adding zeros to the right side of decimal fraction doesn't change its value. For example, if we have 13.6, this is the same number as 13.600. And we can uh, ignore zeros after last non-zero number, after last non-zero digit. Um, which is after uh, digit 6 must be after floating point. For example, if we have um, 2, 24 and 56, 0, 0, 0, this is equal to 24 and 56. So we can add any number of zeros at the tail of our number and we can um, cancel it out and the number will be the same. So we can drop zeros at the end of decimal fraction and it doesn't change its values. And we can add, um, for example, if we have 0.00, .00 
and 0, 0. This is equal to these zeros can be ignored. And um, this is equal to. And that's all. Uh, very important to know that these zeros cannot be uh, ignored and omitted because um, we can only ignore zeros after uh, last non-zero digit, which is after floating point. Um, let's uh, give another examples. Uh, examples with um, multiplication of our decimal fraction by um, by 10, 100, 1000 and powers of number 10. For example, number 1, number 12.34 and 5 times 100. Um, when we multiply to 100, because 100 has two zeros, we have to move our floating point to the right side um, two times. And answer will be 1, 2, 3, 4, point 0.5. Another example, um, 12.345 um, times 10, because we have only one zero here, uh, we'll move our floating point to the right side and we have to make just one move and we have 123.45. Another example, um, 12.345 times 1000 will move our floating point because we have three zeros here we move our floating point to the right side uh, by the number we move three times so we have um, twelve thousand and three hundred forty five uh, how about division division is the same but we have to move our floating point not to the right side, but to the left side. For example, if we have 123.45 divided by 100, uh, since we have two zeros here, we have to move our floating point, not to the left side, but not to the right side, but to the left side, and we have to do it two times. And we have one floating point, two, three, four, five. Um, and last example, uh, let's divide our number by 1000. Since we have th three zeros here, we have to move our floating point three times to the left side, and the result will be point will be here, floating point one, two, three, four, five. And we also put here uh, zero. This was everything for today. Like us and subscribe and thank you for your attention. In this tutorial, we will learn addition and subtraction of decimal fractions. After this tutorial, you will be able to add and subtract uh, two or three um, decimal fractions without using calculator. Like us and subscribe and let's get started. Uh, first of all, we have to say that Addition and subtraction of decimal fractions 
are performed in the same way as addition and subtraction of whole numbers. We only have to take care to write each digit in its proper place. I mean, um, tenth under tenth, hundredth under hundredth, and so on. The best way to explain this uh, is to give example. Let's begin with the first example. Example number one. Um, let's perform addition of decimal fractions. 2.3 plus 0 0.02 plus 14.96. Uh, we will use um, just our brain without calculator. And uh, how to do it? Uh, we write 2 and 3 uh, plus, we perform additions, uh, plus 0 0.02, 14, point nine and 6. And here, the most important thing is that we have to write each digit in its proper place. For example, here we have uh, our decimal, our floating points in a row in its proper place. And of course, tenth and hundredth in its proper place. This is very important. Um, next, we add 2 plus 6 is 8, uh, 3 plus 9 is 12, and we write the last digit 2 and remember 1. Uh, having 12, we write 2 and remember 1 here. Next, uh, we perform addition 2 plus 0 and plus 4 is 6, and this 1 is used and we have not 6, but 6 plus 1, which is equal to 7. 7. And uh, 1 is written here. Uh, next, we have to write decimal, write floating point in its place. And this is answer. So um, result will be 17 point 28. Next, solve another example, example number two. Um, 9.8 plus 0 0.09 plus 19.76. Um, we write 9.8 plus 0 0.09 and plus 19 decimal point 7 and 6. Uh, once again note that we um, take care to write each digit in its proper place without any shift. Uh, next 9, 9 here plus 6 will be 15, 15, um, and um, here we write just last digit 5, and remember 1. We will use this 1 further. Uh, next, 8 plus 0 plus 7 will be 15, and 15 plus 1 is 16. We use this 1. Uh, 16, what we do with 16? We write last digit 6 and remember 1 again. Next, 9 plus 0 plus 9 is 18, but we have 1 remembered. So 18 plus 1 is 19. We use this. We write 19 and 1 again is remembered. Next, uh, here 1 this one, 
uh, is written here, but we have remembered one. And uh, we use this one. So one plus one is two. Uh, and at last we write a floating point in its place and answer will be 29.65. Uh, next example. Example number three. Uh, let's perform addition 17.09 plus 129.91 plus 91.07. We write 17.09 plus 129.91 plus 91.07. Um, we perform addition 9 plus 1 plus 7 is 17. Um, from this 17, we write last digit 7 and remember 1. A 0 plus 9 plus 0 is 9. 9 plus this 1 is 10. We write 0 and remember 1 again. 7 plus 9 plus 1 is 17. 17 plus this one is 18. We write 8 and remember 1 again. Here 1 plus 2 plus 9 is 12. 12 plus this one is 13. We write just 3 and remember 1 again. Uh, this one is written here, but with this one, uh, we have two. And let's write decimal floating point. Uh, let's write floating point in its place, and answer will be 238.07. Another example will be... Um, Example with subtraction. Example number four. Assume 190.91 minus 27.63. Uh, let's write it. 190.91 minus 27.63. Um, here we have to uh, subtract 1 minus 3, but 1 is less than 3, and 3 is bigger than 1. That's why we give one digit, uh, digit 1, from this 9, and we have here, we have here, Eight, because we give one to its neighbor, and we have not one but eleven. Eleven minus three will be eight, and we write eight here. Here we have next. Here we have eight, and eight uh, minus six, not nine, but eight. Not 9, but 8. 8 minus 6 is 2. Um, 0 minus 7, we cannot perform it. So we give 1. We give 1 from this 9. And we have here 8. And our 0 will be 10. Uh, 10 minus 7 is 3. Here we had 8 minus 2 is 6 and let's write um, 1 let's rewrite 1 and put floating floating point in its place
So our answer will be 163 and floating point 28. The last example with subtraction, example number five. Um, 238 floating point 01 minus 22 floating point 97. Let's write, and um, we have to write, of course, every digit in its proper place. 238, 0, 1, minus 22.97. Here we have um, very... Um, you have to pay attention here. Uh, we cannot take... 7 from 1, so we give from this 0, 1, but we cannot do it because it's 0. And we have to give from this 8, 1, and our 0 will be 10. So here, instead this 8, we have 7, and 1 here is given to this 0, so we have 10. And from this 10, we give 1 to this 1, and we have 11. And here, we do not have 0, but 9. But 9. But 9. And here we have 11. 11 minus... 7 is 4, let's write 4, here we next we have 9, 9 mi minus 9 is 0, uh, next here 7 minus 2 is 5, Five. and uh, 3 minus 2 is 1. And uh, 2 is, we just have to rewrite it. So answer is 215.04. This is an answer. Uh, it was everything for this tutorial. Like us and subscribe. Thank you for your attention. In this tutorial, we are going to learn division of decimal fractions. After this tutorial, you will be able to divide any decimal by any decimal. Uh, let's get started. Like us and subscribe. Do not forget. Uh, let's begin with examples because this is quite technical and we have to solve more examples. Uh, example number one. Example number one. Let's divide number 16.5. 5024 by number 54. Um, as I said, this is technical and I will solve problems. I will perform division. And first of all, we will divide decimal fraction by integer number and then after this we will learn how to divide decimal by decimal um, first of all let's look at number 16 since 54 is consisting of two digits we take two digits it's 16 and how many 54 we have inside 16 uh, zero and we write zero and we write floating point next we look at um, three digit number 165 and do not pay attention um, that it has a floating point let's assume this is number 165 and how many 54 54s we have inside 165. 
we have three actually. And three times 54 is 162. So we write minus, we write minus 162. 165 minus 162 is 3. And we write this 0 here. Is it enough for division? How many 54s we have inside 30? Zero. Next, we write next number, which is two here. And how many? 54, we have inside 302. Actually, we have five. And five times 54 is 270. So we write minus 270. 302 minus 270 is 32, obviously. And we write next number 4, and we have 324. Uh, inside 324, we have exactly 6 54s. And it will be, since 6 times 54 is 324, this is minus 324, which is zero. That's why if we divide uh, our number 16.5024 divided by number 54 is equal to 0 0.3056. This is an answer. Let's solve uh, next problem. Next example. Example number two. Uh, let's divide 0 0.27 and 3 divided by 65. As I said, we here always, in the first examples, assume that uh, we divide by integer number and then we will, um, I will give you a general case. First of all, we have to be able to divide by integer number. Uh, let's perform a division and write a 0, 0 0.273 and divide it by number 65. Um, how many 65? 65s we have inside zero. This is a zero. And next we assume number two. How many 65s we have inside two? Zero. How many 65s we have inside 27? Zero. And how many 65s we have inside 273? Let's work it out and... Uh, inside 273 we have four 65s. And four times 65 is 260. So we write minus 260. 273 minus 260 is 13. Next, we assume that here, actually, we have a zero. We can write it. Uh, we can avoid to write it. But anyway, we have it here. Um, write this zero here. And how many? 65, so we have inside 130, exactly 2. And 2 times 65 is 130. So we write minus 130, which is 0. So our answer will be 0 
zero zero and forty two. Uh, let's give another example, number three. Example number three. Let's divide number 342.375 divided by 15. Um, let's write it again, 342. Point three hundred and seventy-five divided by number fifteen. Uh, this must be quite long example. How many fifteens we have inside thirty-four? Two, actually, we have two fifteens, and we write two. 2 times 15 is 30, we write minus 30. 34 minus 30 is 4, we write here 2. How many 15s we have inside 42? And answer is 2, and 2 times 15 is 30, we write minus 30. 42 minus 30 is 12. We write here number three. How many fifteens we have inside one hundred and twenty three? Uh, we have um, eight, eight, and do not forget put here decimal points minus one hundred and twenty. And 123 minus 120 is 3. We write here number 7. Inside 37 we have 15 2 times. <clears throat> and 2 times 15 is 30. So we write minus 30, which is 7. And we write number 5 here. How many 15s we have inside 75? Exactly 5. 5 times 15 is 75. 75 minus 75 is 0. And we have an answer. This is our answer. And 342.375 divided by 15 is... 22.825. Let's solve um, example, last example, example number four, where we divide decimal number as 0 0.04569 divided by 0 0.0012. Um, before we solved examples where we performed division by integer number, and here we have decimal number, decimal fraction divided by decimal fraction, and how we um, transform our problem into another problem where we we perform division by integer number. Very easy. We just um, shift our decimal points. Uh, here we, we can shift our decimal point four times. One, two, three, four times. And uh, we have 12. Here uh, we also can shift our decimal number four times. 1, 2, 3, and 4, and we will have 456.9. And result of division of these two examples is the same. And next we solve uh, this problem 
this example, where this is again division by integer number. Let's perform it. Um, 456.9 divided by 12. Okay, uh, how many, how many 12, 12s we have inside 45? Actually three, and we write three, three times 12 is 36. So this is minus 36. 45 minus 36 is nine. Nine, we write here six, and how many 12s we have inside 96? Actually, exactly 8. We write 8. And since our integer part of the number, uh, is finished, we put floating point here. Um, and 8 times 12 is 96. So we have zero. Next, we rewrite our number nine. Our number nine. And uh, inside number nine, we have 12 zero times. So we write zero. And we add another zero from here. And we have 90. Inside, inside 90, we have 12 seven times and seven times 12 is 84. So we write minus 84, 90 minus 84 is six. We write here zero in the tail of this number and which gives us 60. Inside 60, we have number 12 five times and five times 12 is exactly 60, so 60 minus 60 is 0, and we solved our problem, and this is an answer. So, um, answer to our second problem, or the first problem, will be the same, and this is 38.0 and 75. Uh, now you are able to divide any decimal fraction by any decimal fraction. Um, like and subscribe if you liked uh, my video. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. In this tutorial, uh, we are going to learn multiplication of decimal fractions or decimals. At the end of this tutorial, you will be able to multiply any decimal uh, fraction or any decimal by any decimal. Like us and subscribe and let's get started. Uh, first of all, I have to say that uh, if we want to multiply two decimal fractions, we have to multiply given numbers disregarding the decimal points and then insert a decimal point uh, in the product using the rule I will, I am going to uh, tell you uh, during the example. So let's begin with example. Example number one. Uh, let's multiply a number 3.065 by number 0 0.5. Um, let's rewrite it. 3.065 times a 0 0.5. Um, we multiply this 5 um, by 5 and it will be 25. From this 25, we write the second digit 5 and remember 2. 3 times, or sorry, 5 times 6 is 30. And we remember 2, this is 32. We write um, 2 and remember 3. 5 times 0 is 0 
and we remember three, this is three. Five times three is 15. And that's all. We can also formally multiply the first digit, zero times um, five is zero. Zero times six is zero. Zero times zero is zero. And zero times three is zero. And um, we um, perform addition. And then we um, take the sum of decimal places in all factors. We have two factors. This is first factor and this is second factor of our multiplication. And let's take the sum of decimal places. We have one decimal place, two and three decimal places in first factor and one decimal uh, place in second factor. So we have all in all four uh, places, four decimal places in our factors. And we uh, now um, cal uh, point here, uh, point off here, uh, number of decimal places, one, two, three, and four. So our the decimal point will be here and this is an answer so result of our multiplication is 1.5325 let's uh, give another example example number two and let's multiply a number 5.025 by number 2, 2.05. Um, let's rewrite it. 5.025 times 2 decimal point 0 0.05. Um, 5 times 5 is 25. We write 5 and remember 2. 5 times 2 is 10. With our remembered 2, this is 12. We write 2 and remember 1. 5 times 0 is 0. And with our remembered 1, this is 1. And 5 times 5 is 25. Now, um, 0 times 5 is 0, 0 times 2 is 0, 0 times 0 is 0, and 0 times 5 is 0. Next, 2 times 5 is 10. We write 0 and remember 1. 2 times 2 is 2, and with our remembered 1, this is 5. 2 times 2 is 4, sorry, and with uh, our 1, this is 5. 2 times 0 is 0, and 2 times 5 is 10. So we perform addition of these numbers. And we have 5, 2, 1. 5 plus 0 plus 5 is 10. We write 0 and remember 1. Uh, we have here 2, and this with this remembered 1, this is 3, 0, and 1. Now we calculate... Uh, the sum of our decimal places in our factors. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. 4 and 5. We have 5 decimal places in our product. Uh, so let's 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And our decimal point is here. So this is an answer. And the result of our multiplication is 10.301, and 5. This was everything for this tutorial. Like us and subscribe. And thank you very much for your attention. In this tutorial, we are going to learn a percentage. I actually watched different explanation of percentage in YouTube. And I have my own explanation, which is very easy 
and everybody at the end of this tutorial will be able to find, for example, uh, 3.28% of number 231, very easy. Uh, like us and subscribe and let's get started. Um, first of all, we have to understand that a word uh, percent um, is a Latin word per centum, which actually means a hundredth of any number. And one percent, one percent, this is uh, the symbol for percentage. And 1% of number x is just x divided by 100. And for example, 1% 1 of 200 is 200 divided by 100, which is 2. 1% uh, of number 57 is if we divide 57 by number 10 we have 5 and 7 and if we divide by number uh, 100 we have floating point here and we put 0 so this is 0 0.57 and 1% of number 231 is 1 and 2 so we here put a floating point um, and answer will be 2 and 31 now to calculate any percent of any number the best way is to calculate 1% of this number first. Let's give an example for better understanding. Example number one. Let's calculate 17% of number 300. First, 1% uh, of 300 is 3 and then 17% is just um, 3 times 17, which is 51. So 51 is 17% of 300. Easy. And next example, number 2. Assume 48% um, of number... 500. As in previous example, 1% of this number is 5 and 48% is 5 times 48, which is 240. So 240 is 48% 40, of 500. Let's give an example, number three, and let's calculate 17% of number 538. First of all, 1% uh, of our number is five, floating point 38, and Obviously, to find 17% of our number, we have to multiply 538 by number 17, which is, let's perform calculation, uh, 538 times 17. 7 times 8 is 56, we remember 5. 7 times 3 is 21, with our 5, this is 26, we remember 2. 7 times 5 is 35, with our 2, this is 37. 1 times our number is again 8, 
3 and 5 and let's perform addition we have 6 14 1 is remembered 3 plus 7 is 10 with our 1 this is 11 we remember 1 again 3 plus 5 is 8 with our 1 this is 9 and we uh, count the number of digits after floating point this is 2 and we here also count off um, 1 and 2 and floating point will be here so 91.46 is 17% of number 538 example number 4 um, 3 times 28 percent of number 231 1 percent of our number is 2.31 and 3 times 28 percent is we again perform calculations so 2.31 times um, 3.28 8 times 1 is 8 8 times 3 is 24 we write 4 and 2 is remembered 8 times 2 is 16 and with this 2 it will be 18 2 times 1 is 2 2 times 3 is 6 and 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9 and 3 times 2 is 6. Let's add these numbers. And we have 8 here. 6. 8 plus 6 plus 3 is 17. We write 7 and remember 1. 1 plus 4 is 5 and 5 plus 9 is 14. With our 1, it will be 15. We again remember 1 and 6 is rewritten. And with our 1, it, it will be 7. And we um, count off the numbers here. Uh, 1 and 2 and also three and four number of digits after our point, pl floating point in our factors. We have four and that's why we count off here one, two, three and four and our floating point will be here. So this crazy number um, seven point Five seven and six eight is three and twenty eight percent of number two hundred and thirty one. Uh, it was everything for this tutorial. Like us and subscribe. And thank you very much for your attention.